two, one. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the community center on the island of North Ronaldsay. We're in the games room where we have our presenter, Helen Galland, ready to deliver the Sheep Festival weaving workshop. Also in the room, uh, just lurking, we have Heather, we have Alex, Benji, and Elaine. Benji and Elaine are going to be doing the weaving together with Helen. Over to you, Helen. Thank you, Robert. So, hi guys, I'm absolutely useless at tech, so I'm relying on all these guys to keep me safe. But today we're going to be using the Weave Your Own Rug Mug or Coaster, uh, which is available from the Sheep Festival shop, should you wish to purchase. Now, I don't know if you can see the screen. But we'll be working with all the contents of that uh, kit there. Now, it's a very basic loom that we've got here. It's a card loom, and I'll show you how to walk that in a moment. Now, some of the contents of the kit includes a hard wearing warp. I've got cotton warp here. And we need a very strong warp for this project because we're making a uh, coaster out of the North Ronald's A sheep wool um, in a way that's called crock broad weaving. And I apologize in advance to any Norwegians listening for my mispronunciation of that word. But basically it's a type of weaving where all of the weaving yarn gets packed down and completely covers the warp, as you can see. So it needs to be very strong because it's going to take a bit of a battering. Now, some things that we don't have in the kit, which I assume you have at home, uh, you might require a kitchen fork, but you can use your fingers and a pair of scissors for cutting yarn. You don't need to have special ones like mine. OK, let's get started. So in your kit, you'll find you've got a little butterfly of the warp. And we're going to warp the loom. Now, there should be enough equipment in this kit for two coasters. So you'll probably find there's double the amount of warp in this butterfly. But we'll start and we can cut it to length once it's um, warped. And the remainder is to be used a second time. So I'm trying to <laughs> tie a knot. Tie a knot at the top corner, a double knot. And my hands are shaking because I'm not used to doing live videos. I can barely tie a knot today. There we go. Right. And then we're only going to warp the front of the loom. You see it's got two sides and you could go round and round and round, but that would use up all the warp. Now, if you did that, you'd have to weave your rug on your coaster, your rug mug, mug rug on one side, but then you'd have to weave the second one on the other side before cutting them off. Otherwise you won't have enough warp left to tie them at the end. But as I say, we're going to just do the front. So you go down, round the uh, tooth, up again, round the next tooth and continue to the end. Has everybody got that? It needs to be fairly tight because you're going to be putting pressure on it with the uh, weaving materials and you don't want it to be too loose and saggy. It will get a little bit looser as you're weaving, but start off with a fair tension. Fiddly, especially when you've got nerves, make it harder. Okay, so I've got to the end of my warp and I'm going to cut a few inches off the end so that I can tie it. And you're just going to tie it, same as the beginning, in a double knot. Now you might wonder what these bits of foam are that I've got attached to the warps, to the um, looms. It's just to give a little bit of clearance. If you can see that, a little bit of clearance to help with weaving. You might find it also um, beneficial if you've got a piece of cardboard or something else 
but you can jam underneath the tops of the warps to raise them up a little bit to help you at the beginning. But once there's some yarn in there, it tends to lift it up from the surface of the loom anyway. How are we going there, guys? Right, while they're just finishing warping their looms, I'll explain what we're going to be weaving with. So um, we're using North Ronald's A sheep wool. Now I use the hair from the sheep fleece. Uh, North Ronald's A sheep are a rare breed of sheep that live here on the island and their fleeces are double coated. They have wool fibres and hair fibres in their fleeces. And we've, we de-hair the fleeces um, so that the wool part of the fleece goes on to be processed into knitting yarn. And it's really, really soft, and much like Shetland wool. Um, and it's great for making jumpers and such like. But the hair component is a byproduct, and that can also be woven, uh, spun, if I, I apologise, um, into a lovely yarn. But as you can see, it's fairly hairy. So it's not really useful for clothing because it would be itchy but it's actually really hard wearing. So it makes really good yarn for tapestries and making uh, rugs. Sorry, I forgot my um, participants haven't got scissors. So <laughs> we're just sharing scissors at the moment. So I've got, in your kits, you'll have gray yarn, you'll have dark brown, and then I've got three colours. I've dyed these wools myself. So this is North Ronald's A wool, but I have dyed using food colouring. So we've got pink for rhubarb, <laughs> blue for the sea, and green for the moss. Now there's a couple of ways you can weave, and I've provided a couple of options for you in the kits. And now, my favourite method of weaving actually is just by hand using what we call a butterfly, which I will show you how to do in a moment. But that's basically just winding the wool around your fingers and it feeds itself out without becoming a total mess as you're weaving. But in your kit, you've also got mini shuttles. And to use these, we wind the wool figure of eight style round the edges rather than going round and round the middle, which would cause a large amount of bulk and that would make it difficult to pass through the warp. So if you keep it around the sides, it makes it easy to pass through. Right, so the first colour we're going to use to start this weaving is the green. And as I said, there's enough, wool, there's enough materials in this kit, the two coasters, so that's going to be double what you need. Now to measure how much you need for this particular coaster, we need to look at our instructions. And in the instructions, it looks a bit like um, gobbledygook until I explain what it means. If you look under pattern. Now, crock broad weaving is composed of three different steps to make one row of pattern. And I've abbreviated the colours for each step. Um, and I'll explain what each step is as we weave, so it's a bit easier to follow while you're watching rather than me to try to explain it in words. But where we've got GGG, that's green, green, green. And then it's also telling you how many times you repeat those three steps. So I've already calculated that we need the green about 30 times, it's a bit less than that, but we'll say 30. Now, 30 times the width of the loom. So if you get your green. No, I'm a, I'm a free departure. We're going to measure 30 times the width. You, you don't need a, uh, a tape measure, although if you do have one, it's, you can measure one and times it by 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. <gasps> Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we can cut it off and break it if somebody else has knit your scissors. That's okay. That's fine. Now, for this weaving, I'm going, the colours change. You've got a, a section of green, a section of blue, and then a section of pink. However, the grey and the brown are used all the way along the weaving. So I'm going to put the one of the greys on a shuttle 
and I'm going to put the brown on a weaving needle that you've got in your packs, but I don't have. For, for the colours which are going to change, I'm going to make a butterfly. So to make a butterfly, oh, I'm going to have to show you late in a moment. So I keep counting, guys. <laughs> so to make a butterfly, you start with one end and you pass it between your two, between your middle fingers and keep it tight. And the rest of the wool, you're going to pass in a figure of eight around your first two and second two fingers over the top of the starting point. So start between your fingers yeah. and then wrap round figure of eight. All of the, all four fingers. <laughs> it seems to be one of those things today where you can either, you've either got it, well, start again. Between your two fingers and then round the top two, bottom two, top two, bottom two, figure of eight. Okay, and you keep going all the way until you've got a couple of inches, well, yeah, about five inches left at the end. Oh, I've got to keep remembering I'm in front of a camera here, sorry guys. <laughs> and then when you've got four, five or six inches left, you're going to pull it off your fingers gently so that you retain those two ends of the butterfly. And you're going to wrap the remainder around the middle section of your figure of eight. And then just put that tail inside those wraps to keep it safe because it's the end that you had that was coming from your fingers that you pull the butterfly from and it should come out nice and evenly not causing any knots <laughs> i've got a few funny looking butterflies over there that's okay <laughs> now the first of our weaving is we're going to have to do a couple of lines of plain weave and then we're going to tie them together and that's that protects the end of the weaving from falling apart when it's removed from the warp so plain weave is just over under over under over under over under so we'll start from i always start from the right hand side but if you're left-handed you might prefer to start from the left and it doesn't really matter which direction you start from but you're going to go over the over the first uh, warp and under the next over the next one and under the following one and continue repeating that until you get to the end uh, we we need to leave i haven't got to that point yet but if you we first oh that's the yeah that's right i'll tell you how much once we get to the end of this line but yes, we do need to leave some remaining, which is what we're going to tie the weft to the warp with. So I've come out that side and you need to leave four widths of the warp remaining as a tail on your right hand side or your left if you started from that side. So one, two, three, oh, need a bit more, four. And just leave that dangling there for a moment. Can you bring your hands a bit lower? Push. Here? Let's try there, yes. Sorry, people, I'm getting used to using a mobile phone as a um, filming device, and I'm not quite used to where my hand <laughs> should be in order for you to see the, what's going on. Right, so once we've woven across one and you've left four warp lengths to one side, we now return back to our starting point but this time going over the ones we went under and under the ones we went over. So again, it's plain weave, but doing the exact opposite of what we previously did. So I've been under that one, so now I go over and just repeat. Nope. I should have brought my false nails. <laughs> Sadly, you can't share sheep with false nails. Which I have to apologise that my hands might look a bit battered today, but I was shearing sheep at the weekend. So. <laughs> I 
Okay, so have we all got to the net to the back to the beginning? Have you left four lengths on the starting side? Yep, brilliant. Excellent. Right, we've got everyone caught up. So just push those together with your fingers. Or if you've got a fork, that's the time to do the using that as a comb to combine the layers. Now you've also got in your kits on a piece of cardboard possibly, but in your kits you should have a thick, uh, wide-eyed uh, yarn needle. It's got a large eye for um, so that it's easy to thread thick yarns. So. We're going to get the end of the warp uh, of the weft, I apologise, that we've left at the end, and we're going to just make the edge end a bit thinner. You can lick it if you want to, just to help you get it through the eye of the needle. Okay, so we threaded the needle there. Excellent. Now what we're going to do now is a hem stitch to combine those two layers together. And to do that, you go under of your needle, the first two warps that you come to and pull it out. And then you're going to go under again, but the other side of the two lines that you've just woven. And pull it tight. And then you're going to repeat that process. So under the next two. And then under and out the other side. Pull it tight. See how it's joining the warps together now? That's going to help prevent the whole weaving falling off the end. And a two. And out the other side. Pull it tight. And a two. And out the other side. It's a bit harder for my participants in the room to follow me because they're watching me upside down. But the YouTube video that's online is about 20 seconds behind what I'm just presenting to them. Anyway, we can cope with this. Can we ask just, could we just help Benji a second? Sure. Is that okay? Does yeah. it go under, down here? Yeah. Just uh, first, start off under there. Yeah. Yeah. And then just go under the other side. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
four times four warps. So we're going to get four repeating motifs, i.e. the sheet pattern that I've designed for you. Um, so we have to keep these warps counted in our head and always count them from left to right. One, two, three, four. 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 And it doesn't matter whether you be from right to left or left to right, always count from the left to the right. That's always one, and the last one will always be four. Now, one thing also to point out at this stage is the side warps are called selvedges edges on a weaving. And it's important that we make sure the material that we're weaving with goes around them and doesn't miss them, because otherwise you end up with a weaving that hasn't got the edges secured in it. So although the pattern might tell us to miss a warp out at a certain stage, if it's the end one, we have to consider whether that's what we have to do or to ignore the instruction and go around it. But I'll get to that as we're weaving. It's quite good today that I can explain it as we're going along. So get your patterns. And the first step is G, 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 green, green, green. Now, as I say, it's first steps. The first step in a crop rod weaving is over four and under the other three. So over four, under three, two, one. Over four, under three, two, one, repeated. So as you can see, I'm already under four there. So I, if I go over four now, it won't pull it out again. But if you're over four at the end of your weaving, then make sure you're underneath it now just to be on the safe side. So are we all underneath the last warp? Excellent. So go over it now and under the next three. You can just hold the three together to make it easier. Over the next one, under three. Oh. Being blinded by my own light here. <laughs> over four, under the next three. Okay. So that's the first row of the pattern. Then the next one, which we've also been told is G again, G, G, G. So we're keeping with the same color is over two and under the remaining ones. So that means you have to go under one. But as you can see, where you're already under one. So this is one of those areas where you have to ignore the previous step, ignore that uh, instruction to go under one because we need to go under it now as well. So has everyone gone? I've <laughs> uh, got a few confused faces. Hang on one second. I'm over one and under three all along. But you went under the fourth one, yes? Uh, over the fourth one? Yes. I'm just going to look at one of the participants' pieces. Let's have a quick, you can cut the um, needle off as well in a moment. But, um, yeah, you've gone over one and under the other ones. Uh, do you remember what I said? You have to count one, two, three, four. So you've gone okay. over one. You need to go over four. Okay. So, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> always remember to count one, two, three, four. Never change that. They always go in that direction. It's really important because the three steps rely on you yeah. being able to know which warp is which. <laughs> Sorry, everybody watching. It's a... Uh, uh okay let's have a look yes that's correct you've gone over the fours and under the other three oh. right so the next step sorry if you could hear an echo of my voice but a laptop is playing up at the moment behind me the next step is over two but under the others now, you should have gone under the one, the first selvage, but as I said, we've had to ignore that instruction and go over it the previous time in order to go under it now. Then over two, under one, two, under one, I do apologize, under, under three, four, and one, which are the next three beside it. Over two, under three, four, one. It's still the same question. So, is it under the individual ones or three groups? Yeah, but this first one is you go under the first one, over the second one, 
and then under the three following ones, which will be three, two, three, four, and one, if you number your warps in the correct so, manner. Under the first one? Under the first one, yep. Yeah. Which is number one, over number two, and then under warps three, four, and number one from the next uh, pair, uh, family of four. And again, over number two, under number three, four, one. Over number two and under number three and four. Three and four and number one from the next pairing. Cool. Yeah. I've got a question Ooh. from the YouTube. <laughs> Hello. The question is, do you have a favorite type of wool to work with? Well, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. Yes, um, it has to be the North Ronalds A sheep. Whoa. <laughs> Um, I came here to work with the North Ronalds A sheep and I absolutely love them. And uh, yes, I wouldn't think of using anything else. I do use a bit of Shetland, I have to admit, when I'm weaving bigger pieces because North Ronalds A wool isn't particularly strong for making warps. But um, other than that, it's a beautiful wool for knitting, weaving, crocheting, all sorts of um, crafting. I'll ask you another question. Just yeah, yeah, please. Catch up. Um, so what, what are the qualities of the North Ronalds A wool? So North Ronald's wool is a short wool breed, so um, it doesn't have a lot of strength because of the short fibres that are overlapping each other when you um, spin it. So that's why it doesn't have much strength for weaving, which needs to have a lot of tension on it. However, it is a really soft wool. They um, determine the softness of wool by a thing called the Bradford count, which tells you how many microns thickness the wool fibres are. Now, I can't give you the number of that. You'll have to look it up online. But it's quite a fine wool. It's got a low count, so it's very, very thin fibres, which makes it nice and soft. Lovely. Lovely. Are we caught up in the room? I'm not sure. I think we need to just check whether we've done the right thing here. Do you want to pass? Yeah, I'll quickly know. look at the participants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's look. So you've done the first one right. And over to you under. Yes, that's perfect. Well done. Do you want to check Benji's as well? I will, yep. Thank I feel like teacher now. Thank you. I'll teach you. I'll give you more because <laughs> out of 10. <laughs> over two, three, two, one, over two. Yep, perfect. Okay. Yep. So the next stage should make sense is as you can see, we've got these groups of four which we're making our, po our motif with. We've already gone over number four in the first step. We've now gone over number two. Can you see that in the second step? But one and three haven't been gone over yet. So guess what we're going to do this time? We're gonna go over one and three and under the previous two and four. Now, as you can see, if you've come to this side, I'm already underneath the four. And if I go back under there, it's just gonna pull it out again. So yet again, this is one of those times where I have to ignore what it's told me and take it over the top of it so that I can go under it on the next pass. So we've gone over four from the previous pass and now we can go under it without it pulling itself out again. Over three, under two. Over one, under four. It is about keeping your eye on the numbers. Over three, under two. Over one, under four. And repeat. You've just got to count your walks. One, two, three, four. If you lose your place, just remember, keep counting them. But you just count from the left to right, always left to right. Do so we have another question there, Alex? Um, Yes, yes. So tell, tell us about how you do the, um, the dyeing of the wool. That's a good question, yes. Um, so, as you can see, I've got quite vibrant colours here from the North Ronald Day wool. And um, we're using food colouring. So, this was something that I found on a, another YouTube uh, <laughs> video, as we do. Um, and basically, you uh, have to soak the wool in white wine vinegar and then you soak it in a dye bath with the food colouring of your choice and put it in the microwave for 10 minutes. And that sets the colour into the fleece. 
and you can wash it. It's perfectly washable. I've put my wool through the washing machine and it's dye safe. And of course, the reason why I use food colouring is because it's perfectly safe for the animals. And because most people on this island have septic tanks, you don't want to be putting nasty chemicals into the water system. It's really good to have something that you know isn't going to do any harm to the microorganisms out there. Helen, that's such a good tip because I've tried dyeing before and just everything ends up brown and washed out. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's got much more vibrant colours than your natural sort of onion skin or, um, yeah, it's brilliant. Are we all caught in the room? No, I need, num I need to write numbers on, I can't do it. Has <laughs> anyone got a pen? <laughs> a pen. A pen. Yes, let's do that. Wait, I'll do it. If you have trouble remembering your numbers, you can always write the numbers on your card, deciding which, which side of the warp you want to write the number. So, you know, if you're writing to the right of it or the left of it, which one it's relating to. <laughs> now we've done the three lines so those three set those three steps you need to remember it's written in the in the book so if you forget it it tells you exactly what those three steps are we can now join them together with either your fingers or a fork and can you see now i'm totally covering the warp you can't see the warp because those three layers have individually covered the warps at each step and together they make one row of pattern which would be more obvious when you've got different colours happening at the same time. So we're getting questions coming in fast and furious. Okay. Okay. So we've got a question here. What's a sensible number of colours or shades for a beginner to start with at home? It's tempting to dive in with a jazzy selection, but should we start off with fewer colours? Um, so I've only got three different main colours um, and two for the legs. As you can see, I'll show you. A, here's one I made earlier, which we'll see later on. Um, it's a sheep motif pattern. So the background colour we've just started here, do you see, which we've now hem stitched to keep it safe. We've now started the bottom layer and in a moment we're going to join in some other colours to start to make the motif. So I would say with Crockbrad, it's a really colourful design, but keep it basic. Um, you could change the head colour, you could change the leg colour, but I would say keep it basic to start with, but it is a it is a Design it is a method of weaving that's known for being very colourful. Right, so I think everyone's nearly caught up. So that's your first three lines. Now, if you look back at your pattern, we're down to the next step. And it says we've got to do that step again. <laughs> so G, G, G all over again. So the first one, remember, we're going under one, two, and three, and over four. This time we're going from the opposite direction. So we're going underneath one, two, and three, and we're already over one, so we can just simply follow what it's told us to do. Under one, two, three, over four. Under one, two, three, over four. And it doesn't matter which direction you're weaving from, just remember to count from left to right. Oh, this one out. Okay. And then on the way back is the second step, which is over two and under the other one. So under one, three and four. So we're already over four on this side. So that's fortunate. We don't have to do anything to address that. We can carry on under four and three over two. Then under one, four, three. Over number two, under one, four, four, three. One, four, three. I do apologise. I'm getting myself mixed up now. Over two. And then one, four, three again. Over two and under one. Right, I'll, just, I'll just ask you another question, Helen, while these guys... Absolutely, yeah. Where do you get these wooden boards with the, the, with the um, notches out of the top? Yes, that's a good question. I've, um, I think I found them on um, a well-known crafting um, outlet online. So uh, you just have to look up card looms right. and you'll find no end of supplies. Or if you're feeling ingenious, you can make your own. You can just find a couple of millimetre thick card and cut your own notches, making sure that they're all identically spaced out. Um, or you can even use a picture frame and uh, nail little tiny um, picture nails in the spaces instead to go around. So there are many, many options in making your own loom. 
the card loom is the most basic of them all. And you modified it by putting in the strips to raise it all the way there. So I've added these bits of sponge just to help raise the warp off the surface of the loom in order to make it a bit easier to weave under and over. But as you can see, I'm still struggling because I'm all fingers and thumbs today. But <laughs> oh, it's, it's looking really good on YouTube. It's, it's working really well. Oh. We're, we're, just, we're just, I think, one line behind here. Excellent. If you want to carry on, the next line, of course, is over one and three and under two and four to finish off that third step. So again, we're in the right position already from the previous weaving. So we just go over one, under two, over three, under four and continue. Remembering it's always one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four to number them. Sorry if it's a bit dark on YouTube. I think that's okay. Uh, no, it's it's showing, you can it's see. showing well, Helen. Yeah. Excellent. There we go. And so once you've done those three steps, either using your fingers or again, I've bought my useful kitchen fork. We just push those layers together to completely hide the warp. Another question. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? That's lovely. Yeah, please carry on. Right. So the question is, it seems so relaxing. Do you still have to count or does it just come naturally to you now? Yeah, I think I've been, because this is a pattern that I've designed. I mean, it's the sheet pattern isn't my design. It's everybody. It's a universal pattern. But once I figured out how it was made, yes, it's just a case of weaving. You don't have to count the, the warps anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and, and then the rest of the question is, and how do you work usually in silence or to music or in front of the TV? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I usually have to tell you, and I have to admit, I'm a little bit, I'm a pretty isolated person generally, um, but it's nice to have a little bit of background noise, which usually is my sheet barring. <laughs> uh, but yes, the TV is sometimes good if it's an informative programme. <laughs> <Informative. laughs> <that> rubbish. <laughs> right, so now comes the exciting part. Okay, we're just finishing the lines here. So on the next line of the pattern, so we've done that one now, we've done GGG and we've done it twice. So now we've got GGD and we're going to do that three times. So now it's green, green, dark brown. Now. As I said, with the colours dark brown and grey, I'm going to weave one of those colours using a shuttle. So you'll notice we've got dark brown in our kits. And hopefully I've made them into butterflies. So you could just pull the end and it will come unravelling itself. Again, it will be probably be double what you need. But, oh, uh, but it's going to be a continuous use of the dark brown. Now you might find it's quite difficult if you put that entire amount of yarn on your warp, on your shuttle, that you'll find it difficult getting it in and out. So put on as many as you like, as much as you like, because I will show you how to start and finish a yarn if it ends before you are finished using it. That's very basic and easy to do. So don't worry if you run out of the brown, we'll add more on later on. So. Just do a couple of figure of eights on one side and then a couple of figure eights on the other side. As I say, don't go round and round the middle, which is commonly what people do because it makes it far too bulky and makes it very, very difficult to pass um, through the warps. Oops. That should do it for now. But as I say, if I run out, I can always Oh, I'm going out of shot. That should be enough. If I run out, I'll just add some more on. And I'll explain how to do that when we get to that stage. Helen, can I give you this one to do as well for one of the participants? So I'm just setting up another one. Now, not these are mini um, shuttles. Normally the ones I use are about <laughs> a foot long. But for this, these pur the purpose of using these little looms, they're just ideal. Oh, I think I've got the wrong end there. Oh, I'm out of shot again, sorry. <laughs> just 
just can't get the actors these days, can you? Right. Right, that should be enough for now. Thank you. I'll give you back the yarn. Thank you. Oops. Awesome. Right, so. Are we ready? I'm sorry. The poor guys are having to use their hands to break the yarn, which is really painful. <laughs> That's when you need scissors, because, yes, breaking yarns can give you calluses there. It's really quite, it's really very strong when, you, when you're trying to put it apart. Okay, so the next steps, as we saw, was GGD. And we're going to do that three times. So actually, this is going to make the legs. That's what the dark brown will be for. So first of all, G. And this is the stage where you go over four and under one, two, three. So whichever direction you're on, over the fourth one and under one, two, three. And repeat. Okay, and then it said GG, so the next stage is also a green, and that's the one where you go over two and under one, three, four. So again, we've got to this point, we're already under number one, but we want to go under number one on the next step, so we're going to ignore the previous instruction, go over one. We always have to make sure we go round the cell edges each time. So now we can go under one, over two under three, four, one. If you find it easier to make them into letters, you can A, B, C, D. If you find two rows in green. That's right, yes, two rows in green, G, G. And the final row is going to be the brown. Another point while you're weaving, is it's tempting sometimes to pull your weaving tight. And can you see how that's pulling the selvages in? So keep it quite loose. Make sure that your selvages aren't getting pulled in or what will happen is you'll end up with a coaster with a bit of an hourglass figure. So we want to, to us keep it, these selvages remaining straight. So the final step now is D. So we were introducing a new yarn now. So I'll show you how to introduce a yarn. And this is the same thing that you do if you run out of yarn and have to add in a few more lines of the same color. So give yourself a bit of a tail. And from whichever direction you prefer, we're going to introduce it on the third row which is the over one and three, under two and four step. So under four, over three, under two, over one, and you can keep going, lifting it onto your shuttle as you pass. And put it out the other side, leaving a tail. And you want to leave a tail of a couple of inches. This doesn't have to go in from the same end at that No, you can decide where you which direction. It doesn't really matter which direction you weave from as long as you keep your numbers in the right order. Helen, how did you get into weaving? Um, gosh, that's a that's a difficult question. I learned a couple of years ago. I was really lucky to get some funding to help me to learn from a young lady who was a new graduate who moved up who'd moved up here in order to teach weaving. So it was a really lucky time for me that somebody had just moved to the to Orkney who was able to teach weaving um so that's how I got into it I'd, I'd always wanted to weave and I could weave on a rigid heddle loom which is pretty much the next step up from a, a card loom it raises and lowers alternate warps um but I didn't know how to read a weaving draft which is kind of the instructions uh, for how to warp a loom and which warps to raise and which ones to lower so it was really good that she could teach me that. And so I can now write my own patterns or I can read any pattern and follow it. So that, that's been a great step in learning for me. Where did you go and do that? 
that was at Orkney Creative Hub in um, Kirkwall. So a very local facility. And anybody who's in Kirkwall can apply to Learn to Read there if they're interested, get in touch with Orkney Creative Hub. All right, great. And what sort of loom were you learning on? So we started off on the rigid head or loom just to see what sort of um, st what starting point I was working from. And then we progressed to a table loom, which had four shafts. So again, that's one, two, three, four. It can raise and lower these in different um, combinations. And then I've now, dis now bought myself a floor loom that again is only a four shaft. So again, I can raise or lower these four in different sequences and gives you a lot of different scope for different patterns. How much did your, excuse me, don't mind me asking, <laughs> how much did your really good loom that you've got now cost? Well, it's really great that there's lots and lots of um, heritage looms out there. So you don't necessarily need to buy new ones. If you go online and Google or look on your local secondhand sort of um, sites, you'll inevitably find somebody selling an ancient loom. They may not be perfect in all respects. Sometimes they need a little bit of uh, love and uh, refurbishment but um, I think mine was a hundred pounds which a, a new loom would be a couple of thousand I think so we're, we're looking at what you could afford then go for an old one they're usually pretty good brilliant thank you are we all caught up yeah. excellent so now we've got the last uh, row of this step we have to do something with this tail and what we're going to do is weave back to repeat what it did previously except go over the selvage and then repeat where it's been previously so you can see it's gone over that one under that one over that one under that one you'll do the same so you've sort of doubled it up but then when you get that into the middle of the look uh, of the loom just stick the tail at the back and hide it into the back of the weaving and we'll snip them off at the end but we don't need it at the front of the picture so just hide the tails at the back so my voice is going really croaky. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Yep. And again, that's the three rows finished. So stamp them down again. What's going to happen is when we repeat that step three times, these black uh, areas are going to form columns of green columns in between. And then you'll see the legs forming. I'm only joking. So those three steps are going to be, repeat, be repeated three times in total. So that was one. So let's do that again. Over four, under three with the green. Don't pull in the salvage. And then back again, over two and under the others. And as you can see here, here's an interesting point now. For some of you, depending on which side you started your brown on, they could both be on the, both on the same side. So rather than ignoring construction and taking it out and putting it over number one, I can just wrap it around the brown. Can you see how they're now crossed over? on the selvage. So now if I pass the green under one, it won't pull back out again because the brown has anchored it to the side. So whenever you've got two together, two yarns on the same side, rather than ignoring the instruction, as I previously mentioned, you can just wrap them around each other so that they prevent the, the selvage is being pulled in. Can you see that? The green hasn't been pulled back in due to the action of the brown being there. Over two, under three, four, one, and continue. Oops, missed out that one. So that's two rows of green, and remember the third row is the brown. And that's going over one and three, and under two and four. <laughs> I've got some concentrating faces out there now. 
<laughs> oh, it doesn't necessarily need to be. As I say, you can label them A, B, C, D if it makes any difference. It doesn't actually matter about what you label them as long as you keep them labelled the same all the way through. And those three layers can be pushed down. Oh, now you see, sometimes even I can make a mistake. I've done exactly the thing that I shouldn't have done. I've gone under one and three when I should have gone over one and three. So I'm going to have to remove that line and do it correctly. So it's no problem as long as we discover we've made the mistake before we carry on weaving. It's very easy to rectify a mistake just by unweaving the line that you've just done. Okay, out it comes again. I wanted to go over one and three and I accidentally went under one and three. I've done it again. Nope, there we go. I think if anybody wants help going to sleep, they can watch this video later. <laughs> Really lovely watching it. Okay. It's, it's looking really, it's looking just beautiful. Okay, so now we're stamping together and you can see that that will cover the warps. That's how I discovered I'd made a mistake because I could see when I stamped it down, warps were still exposed and that's because I hadn't covered them all in those three steps. But now you can see the columns are browner forming. That's for the legs. Shall I go get some forks for the participants? Yeah. If you can find scissors as well. We're just going to see if we can find some equipment for the participants here so they don't have to struggle with fingers and cutting yarns. And guess what? That's the second time we've got to do that step one more time. Back with your green again, going over. Number four, your end salvage. Now, as you can see, again, I've got both yarns on the same side of the weaving. Now, if I ignored the brown, it would get left behind. So when you have two together, even if they are not needed to be wrapped around each other to stop them being pulled in at the salvages, I would still wrap around the other yarn so that it gets carried on up the side of the weaving. And that will make it uh, much more, much neater. You won't have these loops of brown between spaces where it was and wasn't needed. So whenever you have other yarns that you're not currently using, try to incorporate them at the edges, wrapping around the yarn that you are using. So we're going over four and under one, two, three for our first step of this last time of this repeat. And the next step is over two and under the others. Again, I've got nothing to wrap around, so I have to ignore the instruction to make sure I incorporate that selvage. The end warps. Under one, over two. And under three, four, one again. Repeat. And then the last step being the brown for the legs, going over one and three and under two and four. Pass it over the brown, over the green. And away we go. Got it right that time, I think. <laughs> Push them all together. There we go. See, we've got a column of three lines of the brown separated by the green. And that gives you, as you can see, you're going to have a sheep there and a sheep there and a sheep there and another sheep there. So, let me just see if there's a catch up. Is this, is the one you're using from your own sheep? Uh, no, it's not, I'm afraid. My sheep have got uh, much longer fleeces, actually, than the sheep on the shore because they're 
on grass all year round. So they um, have a different uh, texture of fleece entirely. So um, I find it much easier to use the hair yarn that's a byproduct from the mill in all of my weavings. I mean, it helps to be sustainable because it's using a product that would otherwise be uh, not necessarily used in any for any purpose. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to find other uses for hair yarn. If anybody is interested in buying hair yarn, they can get in touch with the North One of the Wool Mill. <laughs> and what what would the sheep? What would the wool from uh, your sheep be better used for? Uh, well, it's longer, so it'd be much. It's been lovely for knitting yarn, yeah, and yeah. maybe a, a two ply, very thin yarn, because it would hold its. It would hold itself together. Yeah. So how long, like when we're talking long, what's about four inches sort of long? Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, the sheep that are down in England from the North Ronald Day breed that were sent down there in the 70s, they would also probably have much longer fleeces than the sheep on the shore here. Again, because they're not sort of on the sort of survival limits. <laughs> More of their energy can be put into making a fleece rather than just survival. How are we doing, guys? One of the um, one of the things we do say that North Wales wool from the sheep here is uh, known for is because the sheep live on the beach there most of their life. The yarn always has a little bit of sand left in it because it's one of those um, contaminants that's really hard to extract during the cleaning process. So I like to tell people if you make a jumper out of North Ronald's A yarn, you've got a little bit of beach with you as well. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Can we talk a little bit about how the wool is processed from the North Ronald's? Sure. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I also work in the wool mill here. Um, and the fleeces, the sheep are just being sheared at this time of the year, in fact. And um, so North Ronald's days get sheared quite late on compared to most British breeds. Yeah. And um, they're sheared with the old fashioned dagging shears, which aren't much dissimilar to a pair of scissors, if you've ever seen it taking place. Um, and all the fleeces then are brought to the wool mill, which uh, Jane Donnelly uh, runs, and she will sort the fleeces into colours. Yeah. There's a, whole, a very large number of different coloured sheep out there, um, and we divide the fleece is up into five specific colours for ease of management, basically. So you can acquire dark brown, light brown, dark grey, light grey, or white fleeces. Um, once Jane's processed, uh, once Jane's divided the fleeces into which colours she wants them to be uh, to come out as, we send all of our wool down to Bradford. Now that sounds a bit unusual, but Bradford is uh, known uh, as a large area for processing wool. And they've got much larger mills than we have here. And they can process large quantities of fleece in a much smaller space of time than we possibly could do here. Now, we have uh, washing facilities in our mill, but literally we can wash three kilos of wool in a day. And we're looking at maybe 2,000 kilos of wool. So you can imagine how many days it would take <laughs> to just wash the wool. See, I've been telling people, probably wrong now, now you're saying that, I've been telling people that we send it to Bradford because the water is soft there. Is that <laughs> okay. not actually the case? It, it might be the case as well, I guess. Right. I hadn't, um, that hadn't crossed my mind, but it might well be the case. But actually, it makes much more sense what you're saying. In the but economic scales. Scales. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it still gets back, it still has sand in it when it comes back. Yes. <laughs> it's not completely clean, but um, I mean, it's clean. Uh, of contaminants of organic matter but they still sand retained within the fibers um, and then we process it on our minimal machinery which has come all the way from canada so um oh, I can't the name of the mill now i looked at it yesterday and it's a it's an english name as well <laughs> no it'll come, come to, to me yeah <laughs> um so yes they're very good at making uh mini mini mill equipment and so we brought, brought it all the way down from canada and we have a picking machine, a de-hairing machine, which is very specific for the North Wales Day breed, as I explained. It's a double coated fleece that they have. And so it's important to remove as much of the hair as possible so that the wool fibers that go on to be spun are much, much softer and not itchy. The hair being reprocessed into products like this. Um, and then we have eight spinning machines. So we can process about a kilo of yarn an hour. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a plying machine because, as you can see, yarn isn't made of a single ply. It's made of a combination of two or three twisted together. And as you can see, we're using three ply yarn today. 
Oh, that's actually a four ply yarn. There we go. <laughs> um, and then the final stage of uh, processing is passing it through a steamer, which um, washes and dries the wool within a few seconds. And that process causes the wool to con uh, to what's the word? Like no, it doesn't felt at all. It causes the twist to be set basically by oh by compacting oh. it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So yes, it's much like if you were hand spinning, after spinning and plying, you put your newly made yarn into hot water and let it dry naturally. And the action of drying causes it to constrict. That's the word I was looking for. And as it constricts, the fibre, the twist is retained. And that means that when you're knitting with it, it doesn't fall, cause the twist to unfurl as you're knitting with it. Oh, thank you, Hala. I'm learning so much. I, I, I haven't been doing that after my hand spinning. So oh. It's going to be wild and I wondered why. Oh, I see. Yeah, give it a wash. <laughs> Excellent. So, right, we're on to the next step. Woo. So we've done three times GGD. Oh, we've got another colour to introduce now. And we're going to also miss out the dark brown for a couple of steps. But that's OK. We're going to keep on moving up, retaining that fibre in as we weave so that it doesn't get left behind uh, we're doing gyy which is your gray now you can put the gray on your needles if you've got one or you can make a butterfly like we did previously so why stands for gray yes yeah, so i had to label it in a way that would be easy yes. to with green being g yes. i couldn't call it g so is that gray. like a standard thing do you think you know, you no, no that's just, just my terminology yes, here yes, yeah. yeah that's fine always look at the um abbreviation instructions to tell you what things mean before you set to yeah thank you so here's my gray now again i needed about i can't remember how much i needed now i'm going to doesn't really matter if i run out i can just add more in so i'm just going to give myself a butterfly a butterfly of this gray and if it's not enough it doesn't matter i will add in as i did previously hiding the tail at the back when i get to that stage so if you remember doing a butterfly, pass it between your fingers and figure of eight. Everyone got that? Yep, yeah, figure of eight. Sorry, I keep forgetting I've got to keep my hands here. And then when I think I've got enough, I'll just cut off the tail, pull it off my fingers. Wrap the last couple of inches around the middle of the eight and then hide that in there. And the piece that was between your fingers is what you work from. As you pull it out, it should come out without knotting or tangling. Okay, so the next step was GYY. So the first step is your green again. And again, the first step is over four and under three, two, one. So we're on this side, over four, under three, two, one. Don't forget, if you're already over the selvage, make sure that it's the right side to wrap around it. Don't leave it out. Leave it out. Okay. Oh, that was a funny point you were saying about colouring the fleeces. So I use food colouring, but when I'm um, getting them out of their dye bath, I wring them out with my hands and I don't generally wear gloves. So until yesterday, I actually had blue hands. So <laughs> that would have been interesting, like a smurf doing the um, workshop. Uh, right, so the next step was Y, and that's over two and under one, three and four. So whichever side you prefer to work from again, we're going to introduce this yarn. Make sure that we leave a couple of inches. Don't pull it all the way through. So under three and four, over two, under four, three, under one, four, three, over two, under one, four, three. Continue. Pull it out so you've got a couple of inches. And then as you did with the dark brown, Make sure you wrap it around the selvage first and then copy what it did previously so it's doubled up. So over the selvage, but then under the next three, because that's where it was previously. Oh, no, we have to go over that one. 
under those three over that one and then hide the end in the middle tuck it to the back of the of your weaving so you can't see it and we'll cut that flush later so the final step with the gray again is over one and three under two and four so do you remember we've got some yarns here on the same side and we want to carry them up with us so that they don't get left behind so i'm just going to wrap the gray around them so that they'll get laid they'll get carried up with it do you see and that way there won't be horrible loops where a particular color hasn't been used to in order to catch up with itself it will just be hidden in the general weaving so over one under two and continue over three under four Has everyone fallen asleep on YouTube now, Alex? We haven't had many questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's finding this very calm. <laughs> I can feel my blood pressure really going up, actually. Yeah, somebody did say weaving is very relaxing. Yes, it is probably quite a relaxing. I'll tell you, it isn't necessarily relaxing if you've got a really complicated pattern and you can't for a moment forget it or sit back and just weave without going, yeah. <gasps> what was the next step? Yeah. But this one, yes, it's very repetitive, so it's very simple once you've got the basics to continue. It's a lovely one. You had another one you did, Helen, that had um, like it was a North Ronalds Day themed one I really like. Oh, that's right, yeah. So um, I made a larger one, which I designed because once you've understood how crock broad, sorry again, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, weaving happens, those three steps and how the colours interact with each other when you change them at each step you can design no end of motifs. So this is a sheet motif. You can also design people. I did a rhubarb because yeah. the, gen the general one in crock bar is tulips. But oh, I thought we don't actually have any tulips on North Funnels Day, so I couldn't really incorporate that and say it was a North Funnels Day weaving. So I adapted it a bit and turned it into a rhubarb. <laughs> um, and then I made the stone wall yes. and then uh, the sea with waves crashing. Again, just by changing the colours at each step, you can make no end of patterns and remember it's four that will make up the motif and depending on how wide your warp is will tell you how many repeats you have but it is just a repetitive pattern yeah i, I was looking at it up at the lighthouse um, visitor center that particular one it's absolutely beautiful thank you how long do you think that took to make it is quite a slow process because as you can see you don't get a lot you get a fair amount made I suppose in a short space of time but when you're making a very large one it does take a lot of yarn to make it because it's a very bulky product um, so several hours I would say for a large wall hanging yes. um, generally they use them as um, door stops or wind breaks because oh. they're so thick yeah as you can see it's a very thick weaving because yes. of the three layers that get compacted down it makes great rugs or door or door oh, insulations. So it would be firm enough to work as a rug. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. I was wondering if weavings originally might have been done as a way of wall insulation. Do you think? You know, uh, possibly. I think in medieval times, probably they had a lot of wall hangings up on their stone walls to give yeah. it a bit of warmth and uh, yes, well, yeah, maybe you... sound abatement for that yes. rock band that was next door. <laughs> I don't <know> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Right, how are our participants doing? Are you, are you starting the next few Excellent. It, it's looking very good. So if you. you find that your pushing down has pushed it beyond your little foam pads at the bottom, just shove it back up again. You don't want it being too close to the bottom because we need a bit of that warp left to tie together at the end. Just make sure you've given yourself some clearance. So what other types of products have you, have you been making, Helen? Oh, I've done, I've done a table run recently, actually. It was made of an overshot weaving. What does that mean? So overshot is where you have a thin warp and a thin uh, weaving weft, and then also a thicker pattern weft. So do you remember the plain weaves that we did at the beginning, over, under, over, under, over, under? We do that every step and in between those steps we do the pattern which might go under and over many many walks at the same time yeah. which if you did that repeat repeatedly which you do wouldn't have any strength because there'd be so much space 
So that under, over, under, over, in between every line of pattern oh. holds the whole thing together. I see. But you still get this relief pattern of the pattern warp. Brilliant. Yeah, I always wondered how you made those. Yes, yes. it's a very interesting yes. weaving style. And I've seen you've been doing, making some lamps as well. Oh, we've done lamp shades. Yep, trying to do a whole, uh, what would you call it, interior design of a lamp shade and a cushion that goes with it and possibly a rug and... Maybe thinking of curtains in the future. Yeah, it's like, oh. world is your oyster when you know how to weave. <laughs> yes. So it would hold its shape, wouldn't it, as a curtain? Yes, it would. Depending on the drape as well. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to make sure you've got the right weaving uh, uh, style for a curtain to make sure that it has that nice drape effect. It depends. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. crock would be no good because it's far too dense. Yes. So you wouldn't get any drape with that. But yeah. a twill or something that's got a looser weave in it would yes. be nice. Very good. How are we doing? It's looking oh, really good. Go. So that pattern G what G G no, G Y Y. I've done it once. We're doing it twice. So have you done it again? I'm on the last. You're on the second one, are you? Yeah. Well, I've got to catch up then. I've got to do. <laughs> Too busy chatting again. Round the brown to keep it in line. Over four under the first three for the first row of the pattern. Speed weaving now. And then why 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 oh why carry that over to cross around the salvage as you can see. And usefully they held each other together there. Over to under the next three and then the last one back will be the plain weave over one and three uh, again it's in the right position but we'll just catch the black at the same time so that it gets carried up it's like you suddenly put me on fast fast forward <laughs> here we go and then wallop it down with your fork or your fingers. Not to let the salvages pull in. You see, there's the body forming now. Ta da! Right. Okay, everybody. So the next stage, if you've got back to your list, we've done GYY times two. And then we're now on to GDY times two. So that's green, dark brown, grey. I repeated. So just pull out that butterfly a bit there. Green first. Take it around your grey so that you carry it up with you. Over the four and the three. Oh, have you, you, if you do that, just start a butterfly again. Yeah. That's it from that. that yeah, perfect. Yes, you've got it exactly. Some people accidentally start it from the wrong end and then wonder why it won't unravel. G, then D. So the D can go round the green this time. And this is going to go over number two. But both, I know it'd be fine. I was going to say they're both underneath number one and it might pull it through, but it should be okay. I'm going to pass it that side to catch the green. Sometimes it takes a little bit of creativity to make sure they don't get pulled in. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Got some mumblings going on at the table there. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, it's G grey. Yeah, green, grey, grey. All right, so that's the start of the head form now. So that's G, D, now Y again. Hello. I've got another question yes. come through. Do you ever use a tool rather than your fingers to lift the warps? I think people must be feeling concerned for your fingers. <laughs> yeah, so as I suggested, and I'm afraid I didn't bring it with me because I'm obviously not in my workshop, I should have brought it, is if you've got a piece of cardboard that you can fold in half and make a, uh, you know, a V-shape, yeah. stick that under the warps up here to raise them up. Oh, make a little tent. So, yeah, make a little tent, absolutely. Yeah. Or use anything, a piece of stick. Anything you've got that will just raise it up a little bit to help you. Um, I did the idea for this sponge was to do that, but it isn't quite thick enough, so I might have to reinvent and maybe prop it up with some more like lollipop sticks or something. Or something yeah. yeah, 
So yeah, indeed, I would advise if you've got some folded cardboard or newspaper or anything, shove it up here just to raise all of your warps to make it easier for you. And then you don't have to keep plucking it like a guitar string every time yes. you're trying to weave a layer. Right, so G, D, Y. So the Y is now going over one and three. Now we're at this point here. We're going to pass it round the round to hold it, to keep it up with us. Under that one. Is that right or is it going to get pulled? Oh, I see how that's going to get pulled in now. So we need to adapt where this, these two are communicating with each other at the side so that doesn't happen. That should work. There you go. It's kind of trapped. If it doesn't retain the salvage, the best thing to do is to go over it. And then we can go under it now and it won't get pulled in. Because it's really important, as I said, those salvages have got to be within the weaving. Now we're going over one and three, under four and two. And that should have trapped the salvage at the other side when I pull it through, I'll be able to tell. That's a bit better. So that was that layer. So you see now you've got your head and wool on both sides of the head and the green uh, columns going up, separating your individual motifs. So we did that twice, didn't we? Or have I? No, or no, I haven't, because I've only got one brown there. So we will repeat that stage, G, D, Y. Those two are crossing each other nicely. Under one, two, three, over four. I'm not used to talking so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> D, dark brown. Again, they're crossing each other at the salvage. Brilliant. Over two and under the others. All right, all right, guys over there. Okay. Mm. I like sheep, yeah. <laughs> 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 they never do. Yes. <laughs> And then the Y on the way back is over one and three. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with a good imagination on them. Can I just show you yeah. what you're sort of aiming at? Might, might, might yeah, yeah. Just, just sheep <laughs> We've either got sheep yeah. or aliens or something <laughs> happening. We're not quite sure yet. We'll see. It's like, in the mist, you can't see absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's right. in the fog like today. We're covered in fog today, guys. You can't see the island for the fog. No, I think a plane might have attempted to land and then took off. I'm afraid it's so, yeah. yeah. But fortunately, we've got the boat coming today, yeah. so anyone who's stuck can get away. That's true. Yeah. It's quite nice when it's foggy, though. You feel like you're being surrounded by a woolly blanket. Yeah, I like it as well. I, it's... It's quite mysterious, isn't yeah. it? And, uh, yeah, because sounds are dulled and everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all lovely. You feel like you've got this dome over you and everything. You take note of the, what's close to you more, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so you can just see there, guys, that because this is a hairy yarn, as I'm weaving with it, it's kind of shedding a little bit from the yarn because of the abrasion it's getting against the warps. But just peel bits off if you want, and you'll see the pattern underneath a bit better. You know, in the wool mill, how do... Mm. How do how does that machine actually separate the... That's a good question. So we've got a de-hairing machine and how it works is that the hair fibres are much shorter than, and thicker than the wool fibres. So as it passes through these drums with sharp teeth that basically are tearing the fibres to detangle them, the hairs get shaken down into a compartment underneath the machine and the wool fibres carry on through all, the, all these drums with teeth to brush it out to the other end. So it is just due to the fact that it's shorter and thicker than wool fibres that they get separated. Why would a sh why would the primitive sheep have two types of wool? Well, I can only assume it's because they have basically they haven't been bred like modern sheep have been bred to have just a woolly coat. Yeah. Wild type sheep like your mouflon have a double coat, and I yeah. guess it's for the weather that they are exposed to. It helps to shed rain. From the oh, fleece. Geez. So maybe the, um, is the, is the finer stuff maybe for warmth than the one that's Yeah. 
Uh, I imagine so, yes. Um, and so most of your commercial breeds of sheep will be selectively bred to have hair or kemp, as it's otherwise known, yeah. uh, not in the fleece yeah. so that it doesn't become a problem and makes the yarn uh, unsellable, possibly. Um, but the Northern Ontario sheep haven't been exposed to that kind of breeding. They're completely yes. wild. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, we've got a few determined people nearly there, right? So that's the next step. She said heads formed now. And our instructions now tell us G G G D D. And we're just doing that once. So that's green, dark brown, dark brown. So here we go, green over four under three for the first step. And then we're going to do dark brown, dark brown twice. And that's actually going to form the ears and the head. So make sure the brown goes around the green so it doesn't get pulled in. First step, or rather the second step, is over the number two, under one. Just want to make sure the green, it's not going to get pulled too far in. <laughs> It's like one of those slow cooking shows, isn't it? Yes. Someone's just sent me a message saying that the maximum length of a YouTube live video is eight hours, Helen. So. Ah! <laughs> no. No. Keep no. no. <laughs> I, I will definitely send the whole country to sleep if I had to sleep. It would be great telly. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think watching you weave would and be really a nice thing. You know, you wouldn't have to be talking all the time if you were right. doing it. Yeah, you could just have some nice background music and just watch oh, me weave. That would be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. In yep. fact, my favourite tune I think to go with that would be, oh gosh, what is it? Gordon Gilchrist's uh, Heart Song. If anyone remembers that, it used to be the theme tune for the holiday programme donkeys years ago. Oh, wow. Well, and I'm not going to try and sing it, but <laughs> if you look it up, it's absolutely beautiful. Guitar tune, oh, so yes, yeah. yes. that would be brilliant. Background about music, <laughs> playing along to you, weaving. Yeah, like James doing some sort of noodling on with his guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so then the next step is over one and three, under two and four. Again, making sure we go round that selvage and round any yarns that are on the same side. This is the ears, which will be. Obvious in a minute. People are oh, run to their um, music channel and looking up part song now. Yes. To do something more we can slow television. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw that on uh, yes at Christmas. That was lovely. Yeah, I love watching those. And the year before, it was the postal workers with their reindeer going on a journey. Yeah, you know, I watched the whole thing. I think it was about four hours long. It's lovely. It's just what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I sheep. Oh, good. We've got we have got sheep forming over there. Brilliant. <laughs> As you can see, there we go. See the. We've got legs, body, and head, and ears. So we've just got to give him his top of his head. And then we're going to give a border. And we're going to start the next colour. And do it all over again. Right. So we've done G, D, D. Now we're doing G, D, G. Green. That's great. You've seen the sheep really well. Brilliant. Yeah. It's a really nice motif, I have to say. It's quite a bold motif. Yeah. So, round the salvage, round any other yarns that are on the same side as you're weaving, and first step, and uh, one, two, three, over four. And green, dark brown, green. So this is the top of the head forming now. So this will go over two and under the others. 
you can design these on a graph paper to see if mm. what you want to make works just by making sure it uses four warps. Yeah. If anybody's interested in designing their own patterns. Do you know that Space Invaders game? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you remember that one again? Zoom, zooming along. <laughs> like, you know, really simple little shapes like oh, that. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. It's top of the head and then green again to separate so that you can see. <laughs> I'm going to stop. You're all right, Alex. I, I remember. <laughs> We're all, we're all too young, aren't we? We're <laughs> still right million years old. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so the last one is over one and three and under two and four. And that will be the end of your sheep. There you go. That's the end of the sheep. His head fully formed. And he's got a bit of a strange shaped head, but nonetheless, in this, in this motif, that's what they look like. And then we're just going to separate that sheep from the next block by just doing a couple of rows with the green only. And then we'll cut it off and start the next colour. We'll, keep, we'll retain the grey and the brown. As I say, they're going to carry on up the entire weaving. And if I run out of grey, that's fine. We can tuck in the tail as we did previously when we joined in a new colour and start with some more grey. So the last step, as you can see, in the line, G, 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 and do that Ooh. twice. Sheep. And we've got some happy customers over there now who've got some sheep developing on their weavings. Yeah, he's got hey. Oh, good. Happy people. They didn't believe me at first. They thought, what is, what is, this, what is this person trying to show us? I'm not happy now. They've got a sheep. Well, remember to carry the colours up with you so that you don't end up with a loop when you finally need it again, which is actually quite a long way up because we're doing three green and then three blue before we even start the brown. So remember to keep carrying it up as we go. Next step over two and do the others. And finally over one and three, and we're already in the right place here, so that's cool. And we're just going to repeat those three one more time, just to give us a bit of space between sheep. So over four again, and we're in the right place, but remember to carry your colours. I'm also weaving on this um, full scat file, just to raise it up so the camera can see, but I generally just weave this on my lap. So it's actually quite an accessible weaving kit. You don't have to have a lot of space to weave it. You can take it with you on the bus or the train and weave a little bit as you're going along. There isn't any necessity for a table really. So as you can see, I'm on the wrong side of this number one because I need to go over two next. So ignore the instructions and make sure I go round the salvage over to and back. Hello. Just got a comment from someone watching saying, loving this. From Pauline. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Pauline. Thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is over one and three. Go around the salvage, go around the colours.
Right. So there we go. Now I can use the same finger on my fork. I'll just shove those layers together. Can you see how the warp is completely hidden? You can't see it at all. It's all covered by the weaving material, the weft. Now we've finished with the green now, sadly, although it will be used for the next coaster that we make. So if you have any left from this weaving, don't throw it away because you might not have enough left from when you measured it previously. So keep hold of it, you may need to use it. But in this one, in this instance, we're going to cut it off at about two inches. And as before, when you're joining in a colour, it's the same as when you're ending a colour, we're going to weave it back on itself, making sure, of course, we go round that salvage, but then do go where it was, where it has been previously. So it's been under, over, under, over. We're going to copy that till we get to about the middle of the loom and then shove the tail down the back, hide it out of the way and deal with that later. Fantastic. Hello. Um, I meant to ask, the colours you've got from the food colouring are absolutely gorgeous. Did you mix them or was, was that sort of the red and that was the blue that you got with them? Oh gosh, I think this was moss green. Is that actually by a food colouring called moss green? Yeah, it doesn't sound very appetising, does it? But no, it doesn't. Is that, is that from a normal sort of supermarket? How do you get no, well, like I'm, that? It's Wilton's food colouring and it's a food gel rather than a liquid. Now get the gel because they're much more concentrated. If you buy liquid food colouring, it's mostly water. It gives you a much more diluted effect. But yes, you get the gel. You get, as it says in the instructions, a splodge of <laughs> gel. Uh, mix it with hot water to melt it, and then yeah. enough water to soak to completely submerge the wool. Yes. And then you stick it in the microwave for ten minutes, and then you let it cool down in the water afterwards. Don't remove it. Keep it in the water because what happens is it sucks out all the dye from the water, and what you're left with is a vibrant coloured yarn and the water in the bucket is left is clear oh amazing that's having done a, a treatment with vinegar before mm, yeah absolutely you need to have the vinegar that's uh that helps to stick the dye to the yes. fleece i don't know what the chemical term yeah. is it's yeah. a mordant oh, is it it's, yeah yeah oh yeah i don't know <laughs> so and that say the blue what color what was that it was was that now you'll see blue? well you'll see sometimes again it's because of the hair and the yarn that i've used Sometimes it um, colours areas less than others. It depends how much it's been in the dye bath. It depends how much it's been in the vinegar. If it was sticking out a little bit, it may not retain the yarn, yeah. the colour as much. Yeah. So it gives it a nice variegated colour in yeah. this instance. But I was generally trying to aim for a all over colour. But yeah, the blue seems to be the most likely candidate for having a variegated colour, which is quite pretty. I quite like the yeah. diversity in blues that's in it. I think that was navy blue. It right. depends how much you put in. You can make it extra dark or light, depending on how yes. much dye is in the dye bar. Yeah. My God, you don't remember the colour of the red you, because that's my favourite colour. I really. think that's ruby. Right. Mm. And I may have mixed it with a bit of rose, I think. Mm. So they're slightly different colours again. Yeah. It's always good if you're going to make, if you're going to dye yarn for a project and you want it all to be the same colour, as you can see, they're not. Is dye all the, all the yarn that you need at the same time because it's really, really hard to replicate a colour completely. Yes. So if you don't mind a bit of diversity, that's fine. But if you need to have exa exactly the same colour, dye it all at the same time. Yeah. All right, my little guys are beavering away over there. I think they're nearly done with the greens and such like, but I'm going to carry on with the next colour if that's okay. So I'm sure you can catch up in a mo. So we are going to go with the blue now. So I'm going to measure it first so that I don't pull that entire block of blue through the weaving. That's far too much to deal with. So I'm going to measure out, well, let's do 20 or 30. And if it's not enough, we can have some more in. One, two, three, four, The next time, make a butterfly. Between your fingers, wrap around. Top two, bottom two, and keep going. Now this blue is quite chunky. Now, ideally, all these yarns should be a similar 
thickness. Otherwise, one will dominate the others. So this blue might be a bit... I've just bought some random wools today because I ran out of the blue that was in the kits. Mm -hmm. And I think the wools in the kits are all a very similar size yarn, yes. which means no one will dominate the others. They'll all be a, it'll be a flat work. But if you use one that's thicker than the others, it's going to cover the warp more than the others will. You know, at the wool mill, what can you what's what's the range of thickness that you can make? Mm, well, mm, no, that's a good question, I suppose, but it's quite complicated. We generally, for sale for the public, do two thicknesses of yarn. We've got the two ply, which is our machine knitting thickness or lace weights, and we also do an Aran weight yarn, which we call we our three ply, and that's kind of similar to a DK uh, on the way to a thick Aran. So it depends on the day, it depends on the time of the year, ah. how thick the Aran that we produce is. Why is that? Because the wool is very, very affected by temperature and humidity. Um, and we don't have any machinery in the mill that affects the environmental conditions. So we are completely dependent on whether it's a hot day, a cold day, a wet day, a dry day, whether the wind's blowing from the north or the south. All of these things have an impact on how the wool spins. And generally in the wintertime, the wool tends to want to spin thicker. And in the summertime, it wants to spin thinner. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we're having to work with. We're learning. <laughs> yes. We've had a few sort of, oh, the wall's a bit thick this time of the year, isn't it? Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Order it in the summertime and it'll be nice and skinny again. <laughs> so in an ideal situation, would you be in a situation where you could do like climate and humidity control of things? And I think many mills will have that, although I've always been told that most mills are on the west coast of Scotland because it's wetter on that side I than see. on the east coast. And we do really need a humid environment. Dry wool doesn't like dry conditions. It gets very staticky and it will stick to itself, and it's a nightmare to work with when it's in that kind of yeah. character. Um, so yeah, moisture is really important, and we often spray the wool with um, a little spray bottle of water in to increase the humidity yes. levels around the wool. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also a heater in the um, in the wool mill, yeah. and that's directed at the the spinning machine. Um, so it's not for the spinner's comfort. <laughs> they have to wear a jumper and, and scarf and gloves in the wintertime. It's absolutely freezing in there. Yeah. But at least the wool's nice and warm. You can sit like, it needs that to spin properly. <laughs> Do you have some days where it just won't spin? Like it's absolutely. Really? Yeah. yeah. There are some days when it's just it plays up on every single machine and then it's, it's just a nightmare because you can't leave anything to just carry on. Yeah. You're, detangling the carder and you're detangling the spinner and you're detangling the plier and it's one of those days you probably hear me verbalizing a little bit much in the <laughs> mill which is quite grateful that nobody else is around to hear me and I hope I'm day to go home. <laughs> one time I bought from the mill um like a length of felt like a piece of felt felt sheets yes how, how was that made? So as well as making yarn we also uh, make felt or pre-felt um, basically rather than making a roving which is what you spin from all you hand spinners out there will know what I'm talking about but basically it's a, a snake of fibers of wool that you can spin from rather than making that we can allow the wool to drop off the card as a big sheet or a bat of fibers yeah. and we have a felting table which we lay that on cover it in hot soapy water and the machine takes all of the backache out of making hot, uh, wet felt because it vibrates against the two sides of the wool in between. Yeah. And you produce a pre-felt, which is a softer product than a finished felt. Yes. And of course, it's wet felted, not needle felted, which most commercial felt is. Right. So your little creature there, tell us about how you make, make, make that sheet. So this is Wooly Wooly, which I'm most known for. And he's made out of the hair as well, not the wool. And he's, you use a needle, which is um, a felting needle, which is a long piece of metal with barbs on the end. And the barbs, when you stab it in and out of the fibres, catches the fibres and causes them to tangle together. And so it's a dry form of felting. Um, but commercially, that's where it originated from. Needle felting became a hobby craft after it was a industry, an industrial process. But what, what was felt used for, you know, industrially? Was it hats? What? Gosh, what did you, what did you it's the inserts of all sorts of things, isn't it? So, yeah, hats and insulation. And yeah. Everything's made out of felt. Everything's, everything's made out of felt. So, <laughs> yeah, because I've... Interiors always, of cars, yeah. bits and... I'm always 
think about how to how to make our house warmer. Mm. And one of the things I think about oh, would would be great to have great bits of felt acting as as wool insulation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people do also use fleece. Whatever you're going to use, make sure it's been um, protected against moths or something. Because yes. the wool in our mill hasn't been treated with any chemicals, so yes. you will have to treat it for moth repellency if you're going to stick it between your walls or your house. <laughs> All the guys are starting on the blue. Excellent. One Everyone's catching up now. Right. So we've got our lovely blue. You've got a slightly different. It, yeah. Either 20. It doesn't matter if you run out or just add some more in later. It's absolutely fine. So do what you can manage because that's quite thick. And that's because my yarn is actually thicker here than your one there. Um, so do what you think is comfortable to be able to pull in and out of your warp. As I say, I've shown you how to start and finish a colour. So it shouldn't now be an issue if you have to restart with more yarn because you've run out of it. Right, let's start again. So we're going to do two rows of GGG. Uh, no, BBB. Do the boom. <laughs> so over four, under three, and repeat. Oh, making sure you've got a couple of inches at the other end again, which you're going to tuck behind your project. I think after we've made this mug rug, we're all going to want a mug of coffee, aren't we? You've read my mind. No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you guys want tea or coffee? Uh, either. I'm quite happy. Then do you what would you like? There you go. Tuck it in the back. I'd like a coffee, please. It's all right. Everyone putting their food orders in now. I'll have a fish and chips and a side of Right, so that was the first line, and now the next one is under two. But as you again you can see, I'm underneath one, and I need to go round that selvage. So I'm going to ignore the previous instruction to make sure that when I go over two, I don't forget the selvage. There we go back. This is beautiful blue. So I think blue, aquamarine, and turquoise are my favourite colours. Yes. The colours in this are gorgeous. It was quite funny when I was, I'm in the fire brigade, as you probably know. Yeah. People listening might not know that I'm in the fire brigade here. Um, and when I was on the training course uh, as an icebreaker, the um, instructor went round everybody and asked what everyone's favourite colour was. And everybody said red. <laughs> and I said blue. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's just because you would drive a red fire. Didn't you? <laughs> Well, and the next stage is over one and three and under two and four, and we're already under four, so we can go around these colours to help us avoid missing the salvage. Will that work? Yes, I think it will. Yeah, so if I rush off, it's because my page has gone off and I've got to go and fight a fire. <laughs> How often have you gone? Has your Never. page gone off? <laughs> once. It went off once. Yes. No, it wasn't a fire, though. We're all, everyone knows how to protect the house. Touch wood. Yeah. Touch wood. Let's look after the houses here. It's um, only about 30 or 35, 30, 35 houses actually here. So okay. Limits of what can go wrong, isn't <laughs> yeah. there? We are pretty much on our own, though, if it does go wrong. That oh, is the definitely. issue. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to repeat those three stages again. So we're on the right side of the selvage for us to go over four and under the other three. And there we go. Back we go. Just packs up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even Friday afternoon. It's usually when my brain packs up. And back we go, go around the colours again to keep them. See how they're going up? They've been hidden by the colours that we are using, so you don't get these sitting on the outside of your weaving. It's incorporated. So over two. So in addition to firefighting, Helen, what else do you do? <laughs> and, and working the wool mill um, and your own business, keeping your woolly wallies going, what else do you do? Oh, okay. So I work at the airfield as well. So that's uh, another part-time position. 
mostly acting as a baggage handler, but we are there as a, in a firefighting capacity as well, in case yes. a plane should need us to deal with any accidents. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also a clerk now at the community council, so sort of got a secretarial work there. Oh, that's good. And do tours of the wall mill if people are interested of learning how this stuff is processed oh, and made. Yeah, how do we go? How do people go about booking a tour of the wall mill, Helen? Yeah, so if you before you come, can you please give me a phone call or email to um, book a time that's obviously appropriate to both of us because I might be at one of my other jobs and not available at a time at a specific time. So always best to book in advance, but get in touch with me directly. Very good. Last stage over one, over three, under two, under four. And then we can start with our sheepy again. Are you finding, is, it, is it sort of picking up again, the tourism up at the lighthouse? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thankfully, I mean, goodness, COVID's been a weird one last year. It was a very unusual year with no tourists on the island. Felt very strange here. But yeah, there's more people wandering, coming around, interested in what's going on. So... It's great to see. Summer feels like summer again. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we've done the BBB times two. As you can see, all the instructions are written down and they're available in the, in the packs that you can buy from the Sheep Festival. And all the yarns and the weaving equipment is in that pack for you. The only thing it doesn't include is a kitchen fork. And a pair of scissors, which you may or may not want to include while you're working. We found them quite useful today, I think, to have them. Right, next step after BBB twice is BBD. So that's getting back onto the legs again. So B, and we're going to bring in the dark brown. It's getting in the way. Right, so first time. Again, make sure we go around the salvage, make sure we incorporate the colours, don't leave them behind. Over four under the next three and continue. These guys are working really quickly now. I think we can have a sweatshop, Helen. Excellent. Right. Well, we'll, we'll be selling these coasters. <laughs> these coasters will be available at five pound a person. <laughs> Exclusively from North Ronald Day, Workers Inc. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't we be doing We'll pay them 2p an hour. Yeah, that'd be fine, <laughs> wouldn't it? We'll not... get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rhubarb. Uh, yep, yeah, so we've done blue, blue. I have got to do blue again and then green. So over the two that are on the wrong side of the salvage again. So. <laughs> Remember to ignore it if it's not going to go around the salvage. Sitting in this position. <laughs> I don't normally weave with a camera right in front of me, so it's an unusual weaving position for me as well. Yeah, today. definitely. It's, it's, it's making me straighten my back, though, so it might be good for my bad back because I can't hunch. <laughs> and then Brown. Get him to talk me ends of Oh, oh. It's a heinous crime, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Make sure you do frequent, frequent exercises, guys. Sitting in one position for too long is not good for anybody. No, I wouldn't normally. Yeah, I have to admit, I wouldn't normally sit for three hours and weave this no. because that's a long time for anybody yeah, to sit. You've been sitting nearly almost two hours now. It's almost like a test. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the brown. Uh, so this one's going over one and three, forming the legs. Uh, I'm just looking online. I can see it's easy to get those weaving cards. Oh yes. Yeah. You can even make your own. I mean, yeah. They're not that difficult. Because we, we were sort of, we had a workshop last week um, making, doing carvings with soapstone. Oh, carvings, yeah. And it was so good. We were sort of saying, oh, we have an, uh, like an arts and crafts group. And yeah, yeah. Um, see, this would be a nice thing to come and do with our. Oh, yeah. I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> arts and crafts group. <laughs> 
So we're repeating in those three stages, B, B, D, three times, just like we did it three times in the green to produce legs that are a column of three browns on top of each other. So again, don't forget to go around any colours that are at the edges and make sure you're the right side of the selvage so that it doesn't get pulled in. We're going over four and under three for the first step. Oh. I could actually have programmed a robot to say this cream. Over four, under three. <laughs> I do a lot of meeting minutes. Oh. It's a bit like getting to practice. Uh -huh. well. If you forget which bit, it goes horribly wrong. Over two. Yes, I've done that with my big weavings before. I've, the, a TV programme has taken my attention or something. Can mm. I go back and go, oh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Picking to do. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so they're all whispering because they're all getting to students now. It's okay. Over one and under three for the legs. So if, any, if it all comes out very strongly, somebody says what it is, it's whatever you want it to be. Way in which the representation <laughs> the Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with um, it's the same with needle felting as well. If you make something and it doesn't quite look how it's supposed to be, I just turn it into whatever it does look like. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was the same with the stone carving. Like it's sort of whatever was whatever creature was there sort of just emerged. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> And one more of these these three steps to make the legs. Once more, we're going to go over four, but I'm going to carry these colours up with me. So are you guys sort of really getting the hang of this? It looks like you're... Yeah, every so often I sort of think, well, which bit am I doing? Yeah. I mean, if you've got the pattern in front of you, you can also put a little marker so you yeah. know where you are. Avoid um, forgetting a line, yeah. yeah. I'm going on the wrong side of that salvage, so ignore what it tells me to do so that I can go over two without pulling it back out of one again. I was felting workshop, I never did, mm. I ended up with something that was for felting it round a shape, and mine just had a massive hole in it. <laughs> That's a decent it was something that needed a massive hole. Absolutely, <laughs> you can't have enough things with massive holes in them. <laughs> and the last step is green. But brown, which is the last one of these legs now. See, we're getting along quite fast now, aren't we? See, we're halfway there. Yeah. If we finish early, we can all go and go down the pub. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get a boat by some people. Yeah. We'll go buy some class on. <laughs> Very nice. So there we go, that's the legs. So that was BBD times three. And then I went on to BYY or blue, gray, gray. And we're repeating that twice. <clears throat> so blue, pass it around the gray, carrying it up with us. Over four, under three, and repeat. With your little sheet that you've got, did you have you processed it in the or the wool set like just yourself? Or you no, no, I just buy the hair from the mill. Yeah, right. yeah. That's what I meant. I meant your 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 own block of sheet. Oh, I see. Yes. I normally wait if I if uh, the mill, the wool mill because it's um, processing rare breed sheep fleece. Mm. It's obviously going to run out at some stage. We only have two thousand sheep on the island or thereabouts. So we also can process other people's fleeces. Ah. So quite a lot of other islanders who've got small flocks of various breeds of sheep yes. send them over to us to process. So yes, they're all kept entirely separate. All of the machines are cleaned in between yes. whatever we're processing. Yes. So if you send your Shetland or your Hebridean or your Wartbull over to us, 
that's what you get back. <laughs> oh, I see. So, do you, so do you do the scent, do you do the washing of the those that small when you give them a small order in? Do you wash that yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So the big mill in Bradford only takes a bulk order. We can't send it in dribs and drabs. Yeah. So we send the entire wool clip from the island in one go. Yes. Any other fleeces that we get sent to us, we have to process ourselves in our little tiny washing machine. Got it. Got it. Brilliant. Which I do believe on one stage when the washing machine broke, Jane was washing them in the tub at home, much to her husband's dismay. <laughs> but um, I think the washing machine may be mended now. <laughs> have you ever done, there's alpacas on the islands. Have mm. you ever done anything with their wool? I have got alpaca wool at home, but um, I haven't spun it. So I think yeah. it would it would meet, need somebody who's a, who likes and enjoys hand spinning to work with oh, the alpaca right. fleece, really, in any way. Yeah. And I'm not really a, a, hand, a specialist no. hand spinner. So I, I've done a little bit to process my own fancy yarns if yes. I want to mix a bit of something into something else, yes. which I wouldn't want to do at the mill. Yes. That's uh, easier to do by hand. I'm going to have a swig of coffee. My voice is going. <laughs> Firstly, our pack would have quite a different nature, really. It's really, really soft. Of course, alpaca and uh, angora from rabbits yes. uh, are so, so soft. So they're really, really fine wools, much, much finer diameter fibres than sheep wool fibres. Right. So they make they make a much, much softer product. Yes. And it's more seen as a luxury item. It has an added value to yes. it. Yes. yes. What happens to the lanolin from the wool? <laughs> Um, sadly, we can't get that back. Um, when it's washed in the large mill, they must collect it and send it off for industrial uses or whatever, because it's used in hand soaps and car parts and all sorts yeah. of things, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, we've asked if there was any way that we could get it back here so we might be able to process it ourselves, but it's impossible. It's mixed with all the other sheep fleeces that yes. get washed. It wouldn't necessarily be North Wales, yes. a lanolin that we'd get back. So yeah. we didn't see the point, really. Yeah. Right, our next step after legs, what did I say? BYY, isn't it? Times twice. So I've gone over the B first time, now the grey twice, which is over two and under the others. And then back again over one and three. And we're on the right side of the selfish, but I'm gonna go round the colors to help bring them up again. Don't leave them behind. Over one, under two, over three, under four, and continue. There we go, that's the body forming now. So we're going to repeat those three steps again. Uh, over four and under the others. Over two. And back over one and three. Go around that one to keep it in the rest of the weaving. Tell my don't know accents or um, how to impersonate celebrities. I could do it all in a different accent. <laughs> might make you a celebrity. It better not. So that's the two steps of the body. And now we're doing BDY. So blue, dark brown, grey, times two, that'll produce the head. So 
So we're on the right side of the salvage, over four and the three. Oh, I think everyone's, everyone's keeping up or catching up or even taking over me now. Robert's asked a good question. Yeah. I think thinking about how his domestic situation might respond to this, right? So <laughs> if, if you wash your raw, the raw fleece in your own washing machine at home, um, do you have to clean the machine afterwards? Or is it just completely full of hair and lanolin? And oh, okay. So, so, Jane, so Jane didn't put it in a washing machine. She, she soaked it in a tub. Because so the first stage of washing our fleeces, you actually have to leave it in really, really hot water for about a couple of hours. And that hot water, 70 degrees centigrade, melts the organic matter and the grease, the lanolin that we were talking about. Yeah. And then that has to be extracted or drained away if you're taking the plug out of the bath. So that before it cools down, because once the water cools, the grease cools and it re-solidifies back onto the fibres. So you do that before the water cools. So that was the stage I think Jane was doing at home. I don't think she was putting the wool in her washing machine. However, <laughs> I have put up a fleece in the washing machine. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> well, I put it in a bag that's used for horse rugs. Yes. So you can find these widely available everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but it stops fibres getting into the into the circ circulation of the washing machine. So yes, you don't have to wash it out after that because it's all contained in your wash bag, so to speak. Yes. Um, so yes, I've uh, I washed my ram's fleece actually in the bag, and it's like a um, it's like a felted mat which i'm going to now use as a mat it's oh, right. sadly not commercially available because it's got lots of bits of, of debris in it yes. like the food that you used to eat and straw and hay because i didn't wash it completely but um yeah it's quite a nice flat felted mat oh look is this hercules yes oh hercules the ram. he's our celebrity ram he is yes. it's a gorgeous he's ram most photographed sheep on north london <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a shame he couldn't be here today, guys. He would have, he would have loved it. He would have loved the, the, the adulation. Yes. <laughs> what was the one you got of that that naughty little white lamb? He's now, you know, the one he's, he's so naughty. What's oh, dandelion. Name? Okay, yeah. So I've got a two-year-old permanent lamb. Yes. <laughs> now, because ah, oh, now that's the other good thing to note with North Wales sheep. Well, I suppose it's the same with most breeds of sheep actually. That the first couple of years, their fleeces are really soft. Uh, and baby like and doesn't have as much hair in it as they get older they get more hair so dandelion's fleece is really really soft mm. and silky whereas hercules who's on the other spectrum he's eight years old now is really hairy yes <laughs> it's like cutting human hair though it's so easy to cut when it's hairy i have to say oh, right. dandelion was a lot harder to cut because it's just so soft i suppose it's like cutting a child's hair it's yes. all sort of fluffy and oh. <laughs> He's just such a cute guy, isn't he? <laughs> yes, and he knows it, doesn't he? He yeah. does. <laughs> Ruined. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spoiled baby. Yes. <laughs> right, so we've got the dark brown starting to form the head, so that's going over two. See, I've made it wrong there. One, two, three. Yeah, so it's five past. So, mm. five, so you've got 50, 55 minutes to finish it. Do you think that's going to be doable? I think so. And if it isn't... We can finish off this one. I've actually, in the good old scheme of those childhood TV programmes, made one earlier, which is nearly finished, but not quite completed. So I can show you the last stages and how to hem stitch at the end before we cut it off the loom so yeah we'll carry on but yeah. we'll do this if 15 minutes before and if Brilliant. we don't get to that point on the actual one on the table and there's no pressure but <laughs> the ferry is on its way but the participants <laughs> are getting motivated to leave now that's that's okay it's okay just don't frighten your friend who's waiting for me and expecting me at one. <laughs> so we've got grey now going on the over one and over three, forming the fleece around the head. Go round the other colour, around the salvage. Even if you're panicking about the fairy, don't forget where you're, how you're weaving. If you have to leave early, you yeah, can, you can finish right. watching this at home on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Where are you off to next? Okay. Oh, 
lovely. I don't really want to leave here. No, no, no. But Pape's lovely as well. <laughs> if the boat's going by a Pape. It's really nice when it works Repeat that way. Repeat that again. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just continuing in case anybody Sorry. still yeah. needs <laughs> instructions, but I think everyone's probably got the handle on it now. It's very repetitive. Of course, those of you watching haven't got the instructions in front of you, but as I say, it's all in the kit. It's very, very self-explanatory. But if you do have struggle with any points, like what to do when you get to a salvage or what to do at the end or beginning of a new colour, you can watch this video back at your leisure. And hopefully all the answers will have been answered during the course of this little workshop. I forgot what I'm doing now. I haven't got something to do for the rest of the trip. Take your kit with you. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Very mobile. That should be a perfect thing to do on a ferry. <laughs> It's not really related to <laughs> oh, stop, stop you focusing on the uh, yeah, yeah. movement of the ferry. No, I'm not, I'm not normally anywhere without a set of meetings. I was quite surprised actually when I went on holiday to Madeira many years ago that the lady in front of me took out her knitting needles and started yeah. knitting. And I was like, oh, on earth did she get them past the security <laughs> guards? <laughs> 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 Yes. <laughs> they work on the principle that you can't kill anybody with a small size of <laughs> Probably could. I went to the cinema in Germany and the ladies all pulled out their knitting. So right, we've done two of the head, and the next one is a single line of BDD, so blue, dark brown, dark brown, which will form the ears and the top of the head. Go around. I to end up with a sheet with a body part missing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the adaptations to this pattern you could do is increase the length of the legs by just incre increasing the number of repeats. And you could probably make a pony if it was all the same colour. So there's many different animals that are quite similar yeah. in shape that you could just adapt slightly in yeah. colour and length of legs. <laughs> Including the weird fantasy animal. The one that you're making, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you really want to go overboard, you could uh, use the neutral colours as the background and have your sheep as purple and blue or whatever. Yeah. Have a rainbow sheep. We're going to go back with the same colour, so I need to go round this, either round the salvage or round this colour to help prevent it being pulled back again. That should work. And then the final one is BDB, which will give us the top of the head, surrounded by blue. And we finish the next sheep. Cross over the salvage. Beautiful. Under three. I should have taken the leaf out of that Bob Rossi's book. He's got a really quietly spoken voice, isn't he? He does his paintings. <laughs> you do want people to paint just apply it here. Yes. And go random. <laughs> Make a lot of <laughs> 
People sometimes do look like space invaders. Yes. And blue for last. Oops, hit the camera. And now that color. There we go. Oh, have I got it right? Over one and three. Yeah, I'm good. And there's that, that's, there's that sheet made. There we go. Helen, I was thinking it'd be a nice activity to have workshops for bit island visitors as well. Is that, is that something you could put on for people to do? Well, I do, do I do advertise workshops yeah. in hand spinning, but only for obviously beginners. I can't yeah. teach somebody who's already got experience of spinning but i can teach you the basic principles of spinning on a hand wheel yeah uh weaving on any of the looms that i've currently got so that's a floor loom or a table loom or a rigid heddle loom or yeah. even a basic loom like this um and also needle felting courses so yeah if people want to get involved in any of those crafts while they're on holiday here then get in touch that'd be a really nice activity if you had a family up or something absolutely friends to do yeah i did think about that you could do like um Hen night, hen weekend oh. parties, just making crafts. They could make coasters as wedding favours or something. What a brilliant mm. idea. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the last two lines again is blue, just to give us a bit of space before we start the last colour. So, yeah, any of you guys who are going to get married, want to come out here, do something a bit more leisurely than getting drunk in the town yeah. come out here and do some crafting it's That's nice right. and relaxing we've got plenty of places to stay don't we absolutely so, uh, we're really good and where would you run them do you think you could, I mean, you could use the community centre yeah i'd probably use the community yeah, centre i guess it's a nice well. space there isn't yeah it? Yep. we've got loos and everything yeah indeed and we're all we're all covid compliant we've all got some masks and sanitizer if people are still concerned about that sort of thing of course in scotland it's still restrictions a bit more stronger than down in England but I'm sure they'll soon be lifted but we've been very lucky to not have any Covid here oh, indeed yes yes our island has been and then we've we've been so lucky we've had the best of it haven't we absolutely she looked good in Helen oh everyone's looking fantastic brilliant well done guys Funny how they suddenly take shape. Yes, you have to get enough of the pattern in place yeah. before you it reveals itself. Yeah. I really wish I was doing this. I'm just <laughs> watching. <laughs> Come on, you can catch up. I know. <laughs> I think I might get a kit and do this at home. Okay. Or try to or or organize it craft another crafting session excellent yeah so i'm gonna now my yarn here because it's not the one that, that's in your kit it's a lot thicker than the ones i've supplied so that three layers is almost as thick as the three layers with the that was six layers made of the green but that's just you down to the thickness of the yarn so i might not repeat that layer i might not repeat that bit and just get on with the next color just because it feels like that's enough space <laughs> But I think with your kits, you're all going to have yarn that's a very similar diameter. So you will do the full six uh, rows or BBB times two between sheep, head and legs of the next one. But we're ready to start the pink. So we've got the blue we don't need anymore. We can cut that two inches off. We weave it back in and stick the tail at the back. So go round the salvage, then repeat what it's done previously until you nearly run out and squash the tail in the back of the weaving. Like so. Okay. Try not to pull the way the salvage is in. So it naturally wants to get pulled in. It's, you have to be gentle, not give it a yank when you're pulling your weaving through each time. To use right, so 
this lovely rhubarb colored yarn. I'm gonna measure out 20 or so. That was about enough when we used the blue, we had some blue left over. So I'll do 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. <laughs> As I say, in the kit, there should be enough yarn for two coasters. And there's probably more than enough, actually. So if you have any left, you can, of course, have a play and do your own designs. Weave what you like with the remainder. If you do happen to run out, or if you want to buy more yarns, because you so enjoyed making the two coasters, you want to make a full set, or four, or whatever, then do get in touch and we can send extra balls of yarn out to anybody else who's interested. What's the best way to contact you, Helen? I'll put it on... Um... Yeah, well, I'd contact me via my Woolly Wolly oh, okay. uh, so contact we... details. Making go. Woollywolly.com. Uh, yeah. Yes. Just making another butterfly with this remaining colour. Move yourself a bit. Let's go around the middle. Pack it in and you're good to go. Oops. Oh, you didn't see any of that then, Wood. We've done two butterflies already. I'm sure it's kind of self-explanatory now. <laughs> Detail. Right, so we're going to start from this side over four under three, two layers or two lots of the three steps just in the Bag in the rhubarb colour. Do you sell any of your work online, Helen? I do. Now, I was with a one of the uh, social media sites, but they haven't been particularly helpful. So you can now find me on Folksy. Folksy? Yeah. Oh. Right. So look at Wooly Wally on Folksy and you'll see some of my lovely stuff. <laughs> so Passing the yarn around, following where it was before, chuck the tail at the back. So step one, step two is over. Number two, again, don't forget, sell up edges. You can know what it told you if it's in the wrong direction. I think I'm going to sell a graphic like kit by the end of this. My voice is going broken. <laughs> One more. Oh, there we can go round these colours to keep them in part of the weaving. Otherwise, we're going to lose them, can leave them behind. Isn't going to be a great idea. Well, I'm just looking on your folksy site. You said so you modified your little little woolly woolly sheep. I, pom -pom. I do pom pom sheep now. I do, it's my new. I decided to evolve and. Uh... Yes. <laughs> mm, very nice. I'm sure. Link to that. Well, thank you very much. Okay, it's all made out of the North Wales a hair yarn. So rather than the needle felted hairy sheep, it's now made out of the North Wales a hairy yarn that's I've woven, that I've spun. Mm -hmm. And repeat that layer again before we start the we're going to repeat it. Yeah, again. We're in the right place this time. See, now there's more weaving on the loom. It's easy to lift up the warps because they're kind of being raised up anyway by the bulk of the weaving we've previously done. What's the biggest thing you've ever woven? <laughs> um, I've got a couple of big throws that I've made. I mean, they're not massive because of the size of my loom. That limits the capacity of the width yeah. of my project. So I can make them as long as I like, but the width is determined by the size of the loom. 
So how wide is your loom? I think it's 36 inches. 36 inches. I have a table on. Yeah, it's about 36 inches. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I've made a few sort of heavy throws made out of the North Rose wool, chunky wool, and they're nice and cuddly. Yes. But that's, I think that's the biggest things that I've made. I think the next idea is to um, make two identical ones and sew them together. That's what I've been looking up to make a wider. Oh, kind that's of, a good idea. Yeah. The cut of your bedspread or something. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Wow. You were toying with the idea of doing upholstery. So I am going to be doing upholstery, but I've been a bit busy. But I have been buying up secondhand furniture that uh, needs re upholstering. <laughs> so stools, and to give me as, as wide scope as possible. So there's a footstool, and there's an ottoman, and there's a a drop-in seat chair and then there's a I don't know what they call it a, a, a it's like a cocktail chair I guess they call it where there's uh upholstery and stuffing over the sides of the seat and over yeah, the sides of the arms and up the back so it's kind of an increase in yeah difficulty yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. have you been on an upholstery course I'm going in a couple of months oh, yes. right. where are you doing that? Manchester Manchester really Hi. Oh, that's exciting. It is. I'm, I can't wait. <laughs> How long a course is that? It's just, it's just uh, four days. Oh, wow, yes. And who's putting that on? They're called the Ministry of Upholstery. <laughs> of course and they are. <laughs> <laughs> and they're meant to be very good. It's actually a small world. A lady came for a warm wheel tour a couple of weeks ago. And when I told her where I was going to be learning, she said her, I think it was her daughter-in-law, had just done it and has now set up her own business in upholstery down yeah, in thanks. Yorkshire. So yeah, that's a a good um, feedback from yes. the course if that's yes. what they can provide. Yeah. How are you going to get down to Manchester? I'm going to fly. Right. Like my wings. Yes. So just developing. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm going to start the legs. So an arm pink, pink, brown. So we've got to lose one of our participants if you hear any funny noises because the ferry is uh, soon to be departing. So the participant needs to depart a bit sooner. <laughs> well, thank you for taking part. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy finishing it off and using it for your coffee cup in the future. <laughs> I think we're actually going to get this one finished completion without me having to refer to the already made one. Looking at the time, we're going great. So that was PPD. Oh, now you see, oh no, I thought I'd left the grey behind then, but it's nice there. I really need to not leave it behind again. Sounds like a service station out there. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Uh, we've got another participant who's still would you like forging see, ahead. Would you like to see what energy done? So Absolutely. Can you tell this is real and it really does work? So this, is, <laughs> this is one of my participants' efforts, and that's, that's fabulous. That's so pretty. Well done, very much. That's good effort. Absolutely. So you see how, was it simple to work with? Were the instructions easy to comprehend? Once you understood them. <laughs> Once you got, yeah, absolutely. That was the, um, that was the whole thing with this weaving style. I was following other people's patterns and I had absolutely no idea how to interpret them to make my own. And there was no, seemed to be no instructions online. Nobody wanted to teach you the secret. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then I figured it out. It was just, it's just a four warp pattern. 
and those four, those three steps are the all important ones to help you design anything. Yeah, it's great. But it's like closely, closely guarded secret for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Discipline one has left the building. I'm just okay. hoping all our tech support hasn't as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on our own, guys, to the end. So we can, we can keep going. <laughs> So if it all goes black, we can just um, pretend to be sheep and make barring noises. Yes. So. <laughs> One more set of repeats. Oh, go around the grey, don't leave the grey behind. Mm. Okay, quite and quiet, I don't know why. Right, over four, under three. But you hate it when that happens. You're watching a programme and it's really quiet, so you put the volume up and then it goes to adverts and it's really loud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right, that's the three steps for the legs. And now the body, which will be PYY times two. So pink, grey, grey. Pink. Now we're on the wrong side of that salvage again, but we can go around the grey and that will prevent it getting pulled in. And then two grey. We might have had just enough grey to finish this without having to install a new piece. So that would have been fortuitous. Oops. Go around those ones. Excuse my rumbly tummy if you heard that on the microphone. <laughs> Should have had a bit bigger breakfast. Oh, now you see my grey has detangled itself. Yeah. Well, I can just re reinstall the butterfly. Don't forget, that's the starting point. So that's the bit that goes between your fingers. Don't make the mistake of thinking the butterfly starts from the other end because you're unwinding it from this end. So pass that through your fingers and then use the rest to wrap around and pull it off. And you've got your butterfly remade again. 
Perfect. So repeating those three steps, pink, gray, gray again. And back to grey again, bring in the brown to carry it up. Over one and over three. All right, next step, start the head. EDY times two. So pink, dark brown, grey. Go around the grey, just to incorporate it. The floorboards would look nice, wouldn't they, in this design? You could do black and white. Yeah, and absolutely. Long legs. And you could you could alter you could alternate. I've done them um, Suffolk, of course, oh. with white wool and brown head and legs. So you could. Yes. Alternate the different different breeds yeah. of sheep, determined by what colour their heads and legs are. The <laughs> dark brown. Where are you? Here it is. Mm, I'll do that one. Might just have enough brown on this um, shuttle as well to get to the end without having to re-thread a new piece. That's quite a good calculation. The grey. Oh, I think just, I missed that one. It's just come past the ED, so it's still hmm. quite, a, quite a while away. Well, just to say, we're probably all getting fatigued now. I've just missed out mm. that one, which I can see is obvious because it's got far too much walk showing. So I'm going to reverse back with the grey, take out that brown and do it correctly. So it's not a huge issue if you do make a mistake. It's usually quite obvious when you make a mistake because you can see there's too much warp showing and it won't hide when you bash it down. It won't be hidden by all the yeah. stages of the rows. It's, good at, it's not good at hiding <laughs> mistakes. Yeah, it's bashing down is really important, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. It's, you have to hide the warp yeah. to make the pattern show. Mm. Here's an idiotic question. What's a, what's a There's no such thing as an idiotic question. What's a tapestry? It's a tapestry weaving. Yeah, so tapestry weaving is the term for the weaving where you completely hide the warp, right. such as what we're doing here. Right. It's basically where you can make patterns. Now, this is crock rod weaving, which is basically those three steps, and you change the colour at those three steps. And that affects what pattern, what motif gets made. Mm. So that could be, depending on what colour, GYY could be G, P, G, you'd end up with a uh, tulip. Yeah, It's exactly the same three steps that we're doing. Yes. It's just the colour that changes at each yes. step that forms the different pictures. Yeah. Whereas with tapestry weaving, you would either use a shuttle or a needle or even a butterfly. You could, you'd be more random. You could determine going over three or four or five warps and going back and forth on yourself not necessarily going all the way across each time changing colors part way yes. having several colors on the go yes. in different places on the loom 
um, but always packing it down to hide the warp. It's the weft that's the most important. That's where the picture yeah. is formed. So with the tapestry room then, what, could you get to it from behind better than this solid, or would it be a solid back? Um, ah, yes, I see what you mean. So yeah. most tapestry looms would be using what I normally use with my weaving uh, courses here yeah. it's, a pic it's like a picture frame yes it's just an open loom yes. so you haven't got a back you've got four borders yeah your warp is strung between the top and the bottom uh pieces of wood and yeah. yes you can poke your stick right through yes and you can see it from both di yes. directions yes. and it's normally in an upright position not on a table so for ease yes. of tapestry making but yeah, old picture frames, if you go to any charity shop, there's yeah. nearly always picture frames. Yeah. They are so good if you don't like the picture or you don't like the frame very much. You can easily yeah. bash nails into each end and make a very basic loom. That's yeah. reusable time after time. Yes. You can make so many things with just a basic loom like that. Yeah. Do you know anything about if there was a cottage in, in you might not know this, like, was there a cottage industry here of weaving ever? I have no idea. Apparently the laird used to weave, but oh, right. um, I haven't heard anything more about yeah, it than I've that. I've never heard of islanders weaving. Mm. Knitting, yes. Mm. Or even spinning. There's pictures of spinning possibly outside some yeah, of the crops. but there's not like the equivalent of a Harris Tweed. No. There. No, um, I think in the 70s there was a big weaving um, industry on mainland Orkney. They yeah. were making suiting fabrics. Oh, right. And I think they finished um by the late 70s yes but they were really yeah. important on, yeah. on the island at the time yeah um so it's an interesting history to look into actually i have tried to see if there are specific weaving patterns yeah. for this area and i can't yeah, personally find it it's an old fabric or something mm. well set. you can in the orkney museum oh, they have got course. old fabrics yeah. uh remnants yeah. or samples of yeah. the weaves well, that, that were available yeah research project mm. to revive some of those yeah yeah I mean, I suppose you've, you've made the North Ronaldsey one, you know, that sign of the sheep and the rhubarb and the wall. <laughs> that's, that's a great, that's a great design. Yeah, I can't forget the rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right, it's 20 to 1 now. Mm. We're going to be finished. We're going to finish. I've nearly finished Precision mine. Precision timing. Oops, all right. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I practiced and practiced this down to the second. <laughs> of course, I'm joking. <laughs> I've got about a hundred of these things at home that I've made. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> just through sheer luck and just gossiping in between weaving, we've managed to make it work. It's fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's all very <laughs> Because, of course, once I've finished this sheep, I'll have to show you how to finish the end before we cut it off the loom. Yes. Yeah, Benji's just doing his legs. And I've just got to the tail, the head, and then the three layers of pink. But yeah. TV producers ever will be... Uh, Great admiration of how we our timings work. Absolutely. I'm sorry, we've got to cut to the knees now. <laughs> Crashing into the uh, tips. <laughs> oh, and I've got a question oh. on from the YouTube channel. What are the three or four main things you'd suggest people remember if ah. they sit down to make another coast or any other weave? Absolutely. Well, to make this, I would say remember to keep the selvages incorporated and the yarns that you're carrying up see these started down here and they weren't all used at this point but you can't see them mm -hmm. because they were folded inside the yarns that i am working with otherwise you'd have lines of black and white going up at these points and it would affect the look and also don't pull in the salvages try to keep this as wide as possible because there is a temptation to pull the yarn and it causes it to kink in and then as i say you get kind of a yeah. an indentation and you want to keep it fairly straight uh that two things did you yeah. want three things you want three or four. Gosh, oh gosh um yes that's about it <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah don't panic don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. panic. <laughs> 
because if you do make a mistake it's fairly easy to rectify you know as I say it's quite obvious when you've made a mistake you can see it yeah. with the warp showing yeah. and so go back and do that step again you've yeah. obviously made a mistake with that step you can see I've made, a mis I've made a mistake there because it's going to feed behind that salvage but I'm going to cheat by sticking that through <laughs> to catch it now you're really teaching us to teach yourself to cheat. Aye. <laughs> and then that's the ears. We're nearly done. Go around the grey, do the ears. Now we just got top of your head to do. And the size of this loom was just the right size for making something of this dimension. Mm. I know that. In the end. Oh. I'm not even worrying about the fork anymore. It's all close. Get it in, get it in. <laughs> Get in. Okay, we've got minutes. See, this is the last line of brown that I need, and I've just got enough. Well, I mean, of course, I could always have re added further, but yeah. no, it was just oh, good. I, I doubt it's that strict about the actual end time, anyway. So. <laughs> We're on North Wednesday time here. Oh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> we, could, we can go to the, to the back of three, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I finished with the brown. I actually have finished with the grey as well. So I can cut both of these. I should have done the grey at this point. I'm unfortunate. I'm not going to go back and redo it. But when you got to that last stage of the grey, you could have cut it off then, sewn it back on itself. Sadly, I forgot to do that because I was watching the clock. I'm thinking, hooray, it's nearly finished. Um, so I'm just going to do them both together. But for your own ones, please sew the grey in back on itself at that stage where it was the last use of the grey, which was the PDY, pink, dark brown, grey, times two. So the last pass, one over one and three, repeated, and cut it short, sew it in. This was the last pass of the dark brown with PDP. Oh, I haven't done the P, but we're gonna, before I do the P, I'm gonna sew these back on themselves. So, Round the salvage, but then follow where you went previously. Go about the middle. And then hide it in the back. All of these will get cut flush. I have a bit of grey there, but I'll just hide it with the brown. Last one of this step was P, going over one and three. So all of your other colours are now removed. They've all been sewn into the piece with all their ends sticking out the back. We've just got to finish off with the pink and we make sure we had enough pink to do the hem stitching at the end, just like we did at the beginning. So we'll do a few lines of the pattern just with pink. Over four, as you remember, under the others. And depending on which direction you like to work from, as I say, I, at the beginning, I started from the right. I like to work from the right when I'm finishing off or starting. So I'll make sure that I have enough yarn left on the right side to hem stitch. Over two, under the others. And then on the return, it will get me back to the position where I want to be. enough pink to finish it off now I would actually repeat these three steps that I'm doing now again to give me more of a border but I'm just minding on the time and also that I'd have to restart a new piece of <laughs> yarn And you want to make sure you've got four left to do your hem stitching. So one, two, three, four. I've actually got enough for three more lines, as you can see. One, two, three. So I am going to repeat that one last time 
which it does say to do in your pattern. And then it's totally completed as the picture, as per the picture. Even up on the butterfly now, but we're nearly at the end, so it isn't really that necessary. We haven't got a lot of yarn to pull through anymore. Still mind on your salvages. Don't forget those basics. And now you see this last pass is going to take me in the wrong direction, but nonetheless, I'm going to do it because I can always go back with our plain stitch, our basic under, over, under, over to get back to this side again. So the last line of the pattern is over, under, over, under. But we have to make sure we're on the right side of that salvage first. So we're going over three, under two, over one, under four. Oh, well, it's nice to have a bit of a yarn, wasn't it, everybody? Oh, it was really nice to spend time with you, Helen. Thank you. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm such a hermit normally, you know, when I see this. <laughs> So we're going to return back with flame weave, doing the opposite of what we just done. So we went over and under, so now we're going to go under and over. Just like, just like at the beginning, if you remember all that way back when we did that. It was like about 20 hours ago, but it actually was only three hours ago. And that will take me back to the beginning, which is where I'm at my happiest. So I can now get the yarn that's left. And it's about four, four widths of the loom, which is perfect. And we'll find our needle that we probably dropped down at the beginning and forgot where we put it. But if we're sensible, we stick it somewhere where we know where it's going to be. Thread your yarn. I love these wide-eyed needles, they're normally quite, even without my glasses on, I can normally thread one. And then we're going to hem stitch, same as we did there. Now, if you don't like doing it upside down, because you're going to be going under the first two, and then going back, but under one, two, those two plain weave lines that we did. So through the weaving, and then when you pull it, it pulls tightly on there. If you don't like doing it in that direction, if you came out this side, you could have done it exactly in the same way that you started with, going upwards into the weaving, just by turning your loom upside down. But I, I'm quite happy to do the hem stitch in both directions, up or down. So I'm gonna continue from the right behind to, and back in, but underneath the first, those last two lines of weaving, pull it tight. Behind two, back in, under your last two lines of weaving, pull tight, and repeat to the end. Doesn't matter if you get three lines of weaving, to be honest with you, it is all about keeping it um secured but generally that's the process is under two lines of weaving that's most of the instruction books will tell you that and on the last one round the two and pass it into your weaving inside the last selvage, not on the outside of it. Pull your yarn through, but before you pull it tight, pass your needle up again through so that it follows the same direction as the warp and then pull it tight. Okay, and then you can cut that off. And now we're ready to take it off the loom. Oh. So hopefully your weaving is in the middle and not pushed all to one end. And you can detach it if your loom is 
stretch if your walking thread is stretched like my one has a little bit. Couple of knots. And either cut the warp if it won't stretch or ease it over the teeth. Either way, I don't I think I cut it last time. I'm kind of playing it a little bite, a bit by ear now. So we've got taken it off the top end. Now we've, it's easy enough to get it off the bottom end. So there's your weaving. Now it will be pullable up and down off these warps, as you can see. So I didn't add this stage in my uh, kits to start with, but then I added an adenum at the end because I realized that this probably wasn't ideal to be able to pull the warps through like this. So the final stage, is, is we're going to tie these double warps together in a reef knot and that will prevent the thing moving. So can you see that? So there should be pairs, left over right and under, right over left and under, everyone knows their knots, boys and girls. And then you should have one, two, three, four pairs. So do each pair like that. Don't pull it too tight because, of course, these ones, you'll pull the wall pull the way out. You can pull the top ones tighter in a moment once these have been secured. And I'm all with fingers and thumbs today. It's like I'm not a surgeon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's one on that side. And then, right, you can pull these ones tighter now because they're not going to pull the warp entirely out of the thing. It's tied at the bottom. So again, you're going to tie these warps in pairs together. Remember that first one got cut, so don't forget that one. Now, actually, these ones will have to be cut because they're in odd pairs. So the top one, you can cut them all. Oh, sorry. You can cut all the loops because the pairs have transferred over to the next pairing, so you can't join them all together. But in pairs of two loose warps now, do the same as you did at the bottom. Reef knots. Tie them tight. Um, Am I still in the picture yet? <laughs> Two. Three. Where are we? Last one. Keep that down, push it down. Oh, I've lost one. There he is. So that's them all secured now. So you can just use your scissors and cut everything nice and short, not too much. You want those knots to be secure, but we don't want too much of a warp at the end, but it just holds it all together. If you're making a large one of these as a wall hanging. You could leave those warps to tie your piece onto a onto a hanging rod because we're making a mat. We don't need them. And then the final thing to do once we've cut the warps short and our ends is to flip it over and cut all those bits flush, all those uh, tails that you stuck out the back. We don't need to have sheep's tails on this piece. So they can all be gone, be gone with you. And because you wove them in, they're perfectly secure. There we go, that should be most of them. Excellent. So that's your finished piece, everybody. I hope you have a piece that represents something like that. <laughs>
all ready for a hot cup of coffee to go and sit on it now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I've still got a participant who's nearly finished. Yeah, do you want to take a quick look at Benji? Absolutely. Can I, can I send that forward? Wow, that's beautiful. Oh yeah, you did two rather than three lines, but that's absolutely fine. You just wanted you wanted a shorter sheep because we do have two types of sheep on the island: long-legged ones and short-legged ones. The long-legged ones often jump out of enclosures called loopers, and the short-legged ones have a harder time at doing that. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. I'll hand you over to Robert now. Right, uh, um, and uh, that's great, Helen. We it, <laughs> yeah, I it's, enjoy it's, making it. It's really, really cute, really beautiful. Thank you. Uh, um, but a number of us have to leave to go down to the jetty now. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I guess it's time to just say goodbye to the people who have been watching on YouTube and thank you for supporting us. And if you want to buy any kits, get in touch with the Sheep Festival. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Helen. Uh, and Alex for your contribution, and Benji, well done, and uh, Elaine, who had to dash <laughs> away early. Disappearing lady. So goodbye, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>